Good evening or afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully you can hear everything okay. Um, good to see you all here already. Um, it's been a couple of weeks since we've done a stream. I've kind of moved house, which, as you can imagine, is a ridiculously stressful situation. So I'm set up in my new place, and I thought, what better way to christen it than do this talk that we've been talking about for quite a while. Um, it, it's quite a... Hmm... I say controversial is probably the wrong word, but it's, I find the, the sort of aspect of, of lawn getting catfished a really interesting scenario. I think it's, I don't think there's anything like it on the internet that's, it's a unique, it's as unique as lawn is himself, um, which is a strange thing that we can't really articulate. We're still struggling to kind of get our heads around it. Um, so, First of all, luckily, I have all of my usual streaming partners with me, so of course, we couldn't do this without Tiffany Lockhart, so thanks for joining us. Hello. I had to virtually torture her to get her to do this, so... <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Um, and of course, um, my good friends, uh, my good friend Shins Koala is here. Thanks for joining us, dude. Thank you. Hey, guys. Um, and Amanda James, um, it's a pleasure to have you with us again. So I do appreciate you taking the uh, the time to come with us. Hi, thank you for having me again. So um, I think we've got to sort of discuss this, the catfishing alone. I think it's a perfect group, this, because we've got Tiffany, obviously, spent many hours talking to this guy and has quite different opinions to myself. I could just make a video and just ramble on and agree with myself, but what's what's the fucking point of that? Um, and I do enough of that anyway. But with this, there's many different perspectives. I, I, just to sort of give a... Well, first of all, the reason why I think we've got a good kind of lineup with regard to this is myself and Shin have been making videos for a long time. I've been making videos for a number of years, most of them about lawn. And... Although, sort of seeing him in a court scenario kind of gives you that little bit of extra insight. Not to say that my opinions are more valid than anybody else's, but I think that gives me and Shin a bit of a uh, an insight that not many have. And also, Shin has a legal background, a bit of a legal issue, um, which is really cool. Now, obviously, I don't need to say much about why it's a good thing to have Tiffany here. And Amanda James, I would say is a kind of representative of the whole community. I, I hope that sounds respectful, Amanda James, because it's like you, you, you've been sort of used to just commenting the videos, and I remember reading a lot of what you said, and that, that's really interesting, and that's why I wanted you to join us. So hopefully you're listen, looking forward to this discussion as well. Yeah, of course I am. And I, I understand what you mean. I'm kind of um, a, a viewer, more than you know you guys have your involvement in in different ways but i'm i'm kind of just uh, you have a, a life basically whereas i don't that's that's basically it. <laughs> well, <laughs> um but i don't know about that but um, just baby of um yeah so i, I want to very briefly touch upon um how i came across all the, the catfishing i remember i was into if you want to call it lawnography, the lawn sort of situation and, um, you know, his story before I believe he'd ever been contacted. Um, and then a while later, after we sort of first heard him talk in, in various means, I heard the Ramona calls. And at the time that they were released, and I can't remember, I think I got older than before they were on um, YouTube however they were sort of put out there. And I remember listening to them thinking that th there was no... At that point, when those first calls that were released, the person that was playing Ramona wouldn't discuss her relationship with Lorne. Now, I'm not going to make any comments on that person because I don't know her and it would be inappropriate to do so. I can only comment on what the facts are. And the facts are that person spent hours and hours talking to Lorne over a long period of time. So it's up to each person to make their own mind up about that. Um so the the reasons behind it, I don't know. It's nothing to do with me. But um, initially when that happened, it was like a perfect scenario because she seemed to be like pointing Lorne in the right direction. She was like cutting out his bullshit 
And for all I knew at that point when I first heard it, it could have been a real relationship. I know that that sounds ridiculous, but you've got to remember that back then, there was there was nothing like that. Now you can just fucking, there's loads of channels putting his calls out and you can spend all day listening to hours and hours of his calls. But back then you was like, this is really weird. So I kind of thought, well, this is great because someone's telling him what the situation is, putting him in his place. He's learning something and we're getting great entertainment out of it. I was like, this is brilliant. Like, it just It was just fascinating to listen to. Because we'd never heard Lorne in what, in, he thought he was in a relationship. You're like, this is fucking amazing. What kind of nonsense is this guy going to come out with? You know, and lo and behold, it was, it was, it was better than you could ever imagine. And then slowly, it started, in my opinion, and this is my perspective, it started, I didn't like the way it went. It was like, there was no end game. The end game was, let's be as dramatic and as, malevolent as possible and I just didn't agree with it now some people will go like he deserves everything he gets and that's the whole point of why we're having this discussion you know to sit to listen to other people's and it's really it's a really interesting I think it's a really interesting topic because it's the easiest thing in the world to say he tried to do what he did to a child or tried to you know he deserves everything he gets now I'm not saying that that there isn't some truth in that but it's it's an easy fallback position that oh it doesn't matter it can you know we can do whatever to him but there's there's many other things to consider um, about you know the judicial system interference collateral damage the, the, the people involved now very briefly I know there's been loads of drama that's happened in the community lately and this particular discussion isn't aimed at any one person because I've not got time for any of that nonsense so. Um, you know, whatever will be, will be, and there's plenty of other stuff going around. So this isn't aimed at any one individual. It's just about lawn, really, and and and. So I suppose it's a precedent for do these people deserve? You know, do they deserve to have their human rights taken away? The, their invasion of privacy. But we could also say that their privacy wasn't taken because they agreed to it, and that's one of the elements that I want to talk about. Of any of you got anything briefly to sort of say in response to that before we get down to it? Well, just quickly about the invasion of privacy. I mean, we're not, you know, hiding around Lauren's trailer and peeking in his windows. Although maybe maybe that has happened, actually. But for, for the catfishing. <laughs> well, for the most just, part, actually, so did I. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the catfishing, at least, he doesn't have to engage in any of it. No. And he he's given every warning in the world not to. And he he rejects all common sense and all red flags. And so I don't really think it's an invasion of privacy so much. I mean, if, if I was on a phone call with somebody and they privately recorded me and uploaded it to the internet, then sure, you could say that's an invasion of privacy. But that's happened a thousand times, and he still answers the phone. So at what point can you, you know, at what point can you, can you say that he's asking for it or he's accepting that? Well, that's, that's, you know a, I mean? that's a really interesting point. It's something we'll discuss in detail because... There's many elements to that, in in my opinion. Like, for instance, his desperation. I think we can all agree the main the main reason he puts himself in these positions all the time is because um, his desperation takes over. So that's the suffering behind that. There's a you know the desperation equals suffering. So there's a human being who's suffering. But we'll go into that later. I mean, that's you know I'm glad you brought that up Amanda James because that's a really interesting element of it it's something me and Shin have discussed before um, about the fact that he welcomes it so and many people will say well it's fair game then um, I, I wanted to ask Tiffany a question first of all to get things going and that's did has your perspective on the catfishing changed from when you first started to now, or do you think is not you still have the same opinion about it? Because obviously, when you did it, you was like, "I'll do it, and I don't care," kind of thing, you know. With regard to him, I'm not saying that you should, but do you understand the question? 
Yeah, it, it hasn't changed at all. When when it first started, it truly was it was this concept that was hilarious was that he thinks that Casey Morrow is interested in talking to him. And it kind of exploded from there. And it was only supposed to be a short thing. Obviously, it wasn't going to be long term. But it ended up evolving into something much more involved. And But as far as my opinion of what it is, it's quite contradictory from what my typical character is because I was going to bring that up if you didn't. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Um, When it comes to prank calls, when it comes to even the Borat movies and stuff, we've talked about that before, Andrew, and you said, look at this Giuliani. It's so funny. I'm like, no, I don't want to watch it. I'm I'm not interested. I'm consistently trying to convince you to get you to watch that. And you just won't. And I've given up. I just won't. Yeah. No, anything like that. I, I don't like, prank calls, um, whether they're played on the radio or on YouTube. It's just not my thing. Um, When it comes to Lorne, all of that seems to go right out the window. And I found myself, even because I've thought about this a lot. And even while it was happening, thinking, what am I doing? What are we doing? What's going on here? And even after the fact, because of having this type of a conversation previously, um, I think for me is that when it comes to Lorne, I don't care. I don't have any sort of compassion for him. I don't have any empathy or sympathy for him. I don't have any care about his physical or mental well being, his happiness any of it i have absolutely nothing wow and that is yeah. and i think that was I gotta tell you, probably I, mirrored by I, I totally most people i had the same yes. things about uh you know uh prank calls and even when you do other predators um uh, somebody who was like as willing as uh what's his name stanley um and uh you know i guess eric thornton and some other ones, I didn't find anything interesting about them, um, or, or or satisfying. Why do you find the... Lon interesting then, Shin? You know, everybody's journey is different as to how they got here. Uh, when I first started getting into this, this is like in, back in 2016. The Ramona calls weren't out yet, and uh, it was just everyone zooming on his uh, his organic stuff. His chat logs mainly, his phone calls, uh, you know, the Sting House footage and all that stuff. You know, you had conscious type person, you, you had um, uh, crank th- uh, cinema, you had all these guys putting out funny, funny stuff. And then, you know, and, and you re- recall who he was at the Sting, and, and of course, because you're seeing it over and over again. And, um, but then suddenly he came out of nowhere. And, uh, you know, I don't know whether his videos came out first or Ramona's videos came out first, but you would think that he was going to get up there and he's going to try to rehabilitate his, his, his reputation of some sort and maybe come out with a mea culpa and I'm so sorry and da da da. And he just came on the offensive and it was amazing to me. And from then on, I was hooked. And then the Ramona calls came in. You know, um, it, he is a singular exception for me, just like Tiffany. I, I don't think I could be interested in people like uh, Chris Chan or, or um, uh, you know, Lucas Warner and all these other weird guys out there. They're weird, but nobody's Lorne. And the thing about Lorne is you want to learn more and more about him. But why, though? You, you know, you're an intelligent guy. You've done a bit in your professional life and you've got things going because on. You don't like mysteries. You don't like mysteries. You, you, and, and not only that, you you have this idea that when you discover more, it's going to be more hilarious, maybe, you know, and it is, I mean, when you, when you take things like you expand things like on Derek in the chat log (laughs) and you see parts of his jealousy (laughs) coming out there, you want to know more about that. And suddenly you hear about the doctor, the therapist and also, and you see it and it makes you think that if there was a real Kayla, you know, Lauren would have been at the skateboard park, 
he can have a fight with Derek. I like what Eddie's just said in yeah. the chat. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I have to, when I read something, Lorne is a mythological creature. And it's kind of true. It, 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 it's something that, despite all of my videos, I cannot put my finger on it entirely. I, I can, it's bizarre. It's like you, you've said to me a couple of times, haven't you, Tiffany? If we could get, like, if Google Earth was like Lorne actually thinks it is, we'd point it at Lorne all day and we'd watch it. We'd had, we'd have nothing else on our TV screen. That's all we would be doing. I'd even be at work and have it on my phone as I'm, like, doing whatever I'm doing. You know what I mean? <laughs> With infrared so we can see what's going on inside the structure. Exactly. I mean, that's kind of what I do anyway. I, I always have Lorne calls. Or or the chat log reading or the sting footage or something about Lauren just playing in the background. But why am I yeah. while I'm walking my dog? I don't know. I I really wish I knew. I don't know what that says about me, but I agree with you guys. Lauren is a unique case for me too. I I wouldn't be nearly as interested in any of the other predators. Um, I really haven't even checked out many chat logs or I haven't dedicated a fraction of the time to them that I do to learning about Lauren and his life. And I'm kind of a, a softy. Like I've, I, I, I don't think I would be okay with this kind of catfishing with anybody besides Lauren. I would feel bad for them. I would think well, it had gone too with far. The other predators. Because I mean, we, we, I know no. we don't like to categorize them in. You well, know, you know, but if they were, if they were some, they were getting contacted, and they were, they really didn't want to be contacted. They were asking, please, please let me be. I'm really ashamed of what I did. I, I, I'm embarrassed by it. I just want to fade, you know, fade away. Of course not. Uh, nobody wants to hear that. Right. Uh, Lauren is much more willing. And so you're saying it's because of the lack of remorse, Shin. Well, it's not just that, but he has this resilience about him that just keeps getting up after every time he gets punched. And and he's and he's got this away, weird way of adjusting to anything that's going on in his life. He was happy in prison somehow he found that, you know, at least based on the his writings and things like that. It was just like a normal day for him. And how he's able to, you know, to me, that's fascinating. And we were talking about, can we find one good quality about him? It's that. But... He- He's, a, he's able to turn any any moment you might feel an ounce of sympathy for him, he is able to quickly turn that off and turn it into, you know, hatred or disdain for him. I remember I, I found the catfishing before pretty much anything else. I, I saw Lauren on To Catch a Predator. I started looking him up a little bit more just because he was from my state. And I, I was just a little bit curious about, you know, what part of the state he was from. And I found a Ramona call almost immediately. And I had no idea what was going on. I thought that she was his real girlfriend yeah. and she just like got mad at him. So she put the call on YouTube or something. I had no idea what was going on, but I was like, why this woman sounds kind of normal. Why is she dating this sex offender from the show and I was hooked and the more I listened the more I you know I figured out what was going on but I remember there was a moment in the beginning when I I almost felt bad for him and I he was begging it it had something to do with the doctor and he was like crying he was drunk and crying and begging her you know "How, how could you do this to us or whatever ridiculous bullshit and I, I remember thinking to myself at the time, like, this is like emotional torture. <laughs> this is not nice <laughs> what what they're doing to this guy. But it was turned around so quickly because his his desperation and, and this pitiful weeping man so quickly turned into this demanding, controlling, you know, rage filled asshole screaming and abusing Ramona on the phone right so he doesn't you you don't even get a chance to feel bad for him for long he takes that away so quickly and again the more you the more you listen the more you see he he welcomes it Ramona tried to end the relationship she tried to even get him to end it 
She said, well, maybe Lauren, maybe you need somebody who lives near you. Somebody in your own state who you can see if you're going to be this insecure. And he just wouldn't take it. Can I just take it? interject and, and say I disagree a little bit there? I don't like it when people say that, oh, Ramona tried to end the relationship. Because she could have just said, listen, Lauren, this is it. See you later. Put the phone down. That was the end of it. She knew full well that Lauren was never, under any circumstances, going to end that. And he, he won't. I mean, literally, what would it take? So I don't... Although there was a certain amount of, there was more transparency at that point than there was earlier, I don't necessarily agree that she tried to, because she didn't. She just gave the cards to him and said, right, do you understand what I'm getting at? Well, of course, she didn't, she wasn't genuinely trying to end it. I think she was trying to see how far she could push him um, until he finally had some self-respect and said, Okay, I'm well, he done. Doesn't, Lon doesn't um, have any, and that's that's basically one of the main factors I, of I all of this. Is, I, she, she, I also took that as she was probing to see if he had any other options in real life. But she knew that he didn't. We all know that he doesn't. We we knew from I'm those calls. Yeah, I know. I understand that. But, but, you know, you also want to know if he had anybody who was in, he was interested in real life, you know? Uh, I mean, that's what I mean. I mean, you want it. That's why I love that call. Lauren speaks to himself for three hours. Um, sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, no, you just want to learn more and more about the guy. Um, and and it's just like an endless. It's it's just a bottomless well. Um, but you know, when I first started, when he first started going out with these uh these um um videos where he was sticking his chin out at everybody saying it was, you know, mac and cheese or it was my brother's fault. Or basically what he was saying was, uh, you know, I won't, I, I won't reoffend again if, if somebody doesn't take advantage of me. Basically what it sounded, you know, that's what it sounded like. I think Mary said that, Mary Madeline. But um, you just, you just want to say, look, read the fucking chat log, you know, before you talk to read before the chat. And that became part of my bucket list at that point. I hope he gets a chance if he's, Catfish are able to read his own chat log, and uh, uh, and and Tiffany gave it to us, which was great. But again, that was kind of anticlimactic because he wasn't he wasn't really uh, he was really kind of uh, hushed and and uh, like almost like a baby uh, baby voice he had going with it. So, but it was good that he actually got to read it and dispel dispel himself of all of these myths. Uh, I, I said no. Um, I never meant to go there. Um, it didn't uh, work, though, did it? I mean, you know, that, that well, happened. And, you know, the I'm a predator calls, no one could have been put in the place better at that point than Lorne, and he still wouldn't have it. And he still doesn't have it to this day. Yeah, exactly. You know, Tiffany, Tiffany could take him one step forward, but then he'd go two steps back. It was remarkable to listen to. You, you Honestly, I don't think there was a person that didn't listen to those calls and think she's finally getting somewhere. Somebody's finally got through to him. And then at the end, he just went, it's because I couldn't say fucking no. It's like, what the <laughs> fuck is this guy on? Yeah. And can I just clarify as well? he was doing it for... If she was able to get through to him, the irony is I don't think he'd be interested interesting anymore. I mean, if he was able to totally accept everything... Well, they wouldn't be Lorne anymore, would they? The whole point of the character of Lorne yeah. is yeah. that, you know, it, it, there wouldn't be Lorneography without his refusal to accept uh, to accept what happened. Because if you think about what... I mean, the, the chat log in itself... That's a, actually, it's a really fucking interesting question, that. If we only had the chat log and he immediately when he went to prison admitted oh my god i fucked up i need help would we have a fascination with that document like we still do i would yeah i would yeah. So the document yes so. for him though yeah the chat log would still be funny oh, but where's course. the fun in somebody taking responsibility and acknowledging what they <laughs> did wrong there's no fun there you're just like oh okay i guess you're right let's read the chat log again you know, you know, there's a certain part of you that, you know, it is really uh, kind of a a guilty pleasure 
you know, laughing at this guy, right? I mean, I'm trying to think of an analogy, you know, something that happened in my life that's maybe similar to this. And I have to go back to when I was three or four years old. I have a twin brother and I used to, I used to dominate him just for my own entertainment. You know, I used to, you know, make him eat things, you know, eat that <laughs> leaf off a plant, eat that dog. You like him, used to make yeah. him eat caviar and stuff like that. It's like, oh. I used to make him eat everything. My, my mother got really pissed at me because my, then he started to get, developing a taste for dog shit. But, <laughs> uh, but that's the closest I can, I, I can, where I actually put myself in the situation and enjoyed, you know, somebody <laughs> doing this to somebody. You know, when I was three or four years old, uh, or 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 the other, you know, the the, the high school, kid, you know, in school, and you, you know, this kid who liked to pick his boogers and eat them, you know, people used to be fascinated with that, you know, in my school, you know, um, that's that's kind of a similar kind of thing. I said I was close as I could get to the entertainment value I get out of this, but <laughs> it's pretty immature, I know. Um, yeah, but you even feel bad for that kid. I mean, that's... My brother, no. A, okay, well, the weird kid in school that everyone would make fun of, yeah. assuming he wasn't a child. Mm -hmm. If Lauren wasn't such a horrible person and hadn't done such truly terrible things to the most vulnerable, you know, the most vulnerable people among us, then... I would probably feel kind of guilty laughing at his pain every day, but because he he tried to hurt children, he did hurt a retired couple. He, you know, he he really really screwed their lives up and blamed everyone but himself. Never really made a real attempt to to fix it or accepted any responsibility. I don't feel bad at all. Yeah. For laughing and, and, when he cries. And, and, and no, I, I don't think anybody should really. At the end of the day, everybody's responsible for their own, you know, generally, not always. Generally, people, life will find a way of sort of giving people what they need as far as the development goes. That's not always the case because terrible things happen, which we don't know uh, because, the you know, the, the, the world is... Uh, a complicated place, but I don't take. I, I'm someone put. I think one few days ago, uh, someone put already in the chat as soon as I scheduled it and said, "If you had heard some of those Winnie calls, and you'd heard how terrible Lawn gets, you wouldn't feel sorry for him." And it's like, well, what makes you think I do feel sorry for him? Just because I'm questioning if it's the right thing to do doesn't mean it's not about feeling sorry for him. There is that element of not wanting another we all have that embedded in us about another human suffering um we all have that you know it's it's kind of part of our instinct to protect the species certain mammals have that and they protect the most vulnerable members of the species it, it happens but it's more about is it the right thing to do for a number of reasons like um you know he's paid his he, he paid his time in prison and then basically he's being subjected to all this for what and for our entertainment um he is going through suffering but that brings up all these other questions about what what he would do if um you know if if the if if, if he wasn't doing this he, he could actually this could be actually be helping him we we don't know he, he could he could have without the catfishing he could have sunk even lower because what would he have had you know he clung on to the community made his silly videos and you know thought he could make money out of it which is hilarious I mean literally it's hilarious I mean I have to say even though I don't necessarily agree with the way it went I have to admit that some of it, look, if it wasn't for the catfishing there'd be no lawn reality show Um the 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 Ramona cause wouldn't exist. Even the um, the Holy Grail. How many how many videos did Lauren put up? Must have been a hundred at least, right? I mean, he saturated the YouTube with them. And and I know that you know uh, to uh, I, I actually I don't know, but I, I suspect that you know he was encouraged to do it by the catfish. 
<laughs> you just knocked out. Which is, actually, that's a brilliant plan, I think. But, it's fucking uh, hilarious. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I have to, I have to, like, maybe, I I was labelled before, when this all went on a few years ago, I was said by a number of people that I was a hypocrite because I used to enjoy the material but said it wasn't right. Now, I don't know, make your own mind up, but basically I can't help what I find entertaining. If I, If something is funny, I will laugh at it, you know. I don't, I've never played the calls in my videos, um... I, I don't, but yeah, I do find it ridiculously entertaining. Some of it I find just distasteful, not funny at all. D you know, after, but I suppose everybody's got the favourite parts and that, you know, the certain characters that I literally can't stand to listen to. Um, and that's not because I have a personal issue with any specific person. It's just I don't like it. I don't, don't like it, don't find it entertaining. It's not funny. It's not original there's there was nothing in it but of course some people like the stuff that i don't but um it, it just brings up a lot of interesting questions for me about i mean what you were saying amanda james about how bad a person he is we kind of said the other week that in lawn's brain he thought he was good for kayla do we all kind of agree with that to some extent and this isn't to say he's a good person because as you probably guessed from my videos, guys, before you think I'm being easy on him, I think he's a, he is a bad person. There's no denying that. People don't get caught up on that show where we're I'm, not. I'm going to say no. I don't think he thought he was good for Kayla. I th what, I, what I would say is he didn't think that he was irreparably damaging her. But, no, I don't think he thought he was good for her. Yeah, that's a better way of putting um, it. That's probably the his... wrong question. It's Because that, that would be malevolent. If he thought that he was really bad for her and he was going to fuck her up. Because what we see is if Kayla had been real and he, he did what he wanted to do, she would have been ruined for the rest of her life, which is why we find it so appalling. But yet, Lorne, as I... This is what I believe didn't have the awareness to realise he doesn't he doesn't possess the level of consciousness to understand of the damage that he would do. Do, do you agree with that to a certain extent? Yeah, I don't think he ever really thought about it. I, I think he was so selfish and um, self-centered that he never really took the time to think about it. Um. Mm. But okay, he's so simple-minded that when he thinks of words like abuse or, you know, damaging a, a, a child, he would envision something violent, um, something painful, like physically forcing somebody. That when, when, you know, the phrase statutory rape comes to mind, I'm sure that's the kind of thing he thinks about. So in his tiny little brain as long as he was telling her he loved her and being gentle for her you remember that exactly. that phrase yeah, Tiffany was, yeah. then mm -hmm. yeah then he wasn't really hurting her um which is hard to imagine a, a, a 37 year old man who is incapable of of giving that thought like, of course, no matter how gentle you are with the 13-year-old, you're going to fuck her up if you put your dirty hands on her. Um, but no, I don't think he thought for a minute that he was, like, good for her. He didn't even try to be, which is interesting because he tried to convince Tiffany that he was a good friend to his real victim. And she had a lot of problems, and he was there for her to listen to her problems about her boyfriend and her... Um, her father and her her problems at school, so he was good for her. But with Kayla, he didn't even try to give the appearance of that. He he really didn't care about her at all. It was all about him and his penis and what he wanted. Yeah, the only time he addressed the damage he could have caused to her, he always flips it around and um, makes himself a victim by talking about how he how he knows the damage because of what happened to him. And, and again, it's, it's controversial as to whether, you know, he was 
he was abused or not, um, uh, or sexually abused as a as a child. I, I I don't buy it. I'm just letting you know right there. But but when you start I, I, I to don't play, either. Is it is it is it is it is it um, happens? But we'll, we'll, it's not something I want to discuss in any detail. No, I understand. We're we're talking about Lauren, not us. That's what we want to talk about, right? Oh yeah, of course. I just meant that the thing that he said that happened to him when he was younger. I don't buy it either. No, I'm, I'm just I'm addressing Amanda's point where you know when you when you do point out the damage you could have done, like what Tiffany was doing. He kept saying over and over, you know, did when he tell you that I know what kind of damage he was? You know, he was trying to make make it seem like he empathized with her because he went through the same thing, and that makes it even more disgusting if that's not true. So, I mean, you, you keep getting this, this outrage levels stay the same. You know, it never diminishes, always there. There's always something new. Um, you read the organic stuff, with, like you read about the MySpace girl, and then you find out with, after what, when Tiffany was done with him, what he was actually up to before we got to know who he was on national TV. I mean, that, that took on a life in and of itself. Um, and I, w- I wasn't going to let go at that point. <laughs> so, <clears throat> but there was a point where I was starting to get bored by the whole thing, you know, a little bit. You know, okay, well, we all go through phases, out. don't we? Yeah. Apart from Amanda James. <laughs> no, I, I mean, sometimes I, I get kind of bored with it, or I'll. Um, I had a, a a period of time where I was very like analytical about everything. I wanted to analyze everything Lauren said and kind of try to theorize what was going on in his mind and what he really meant by all the stupid stuff that he says that never really makes any sense. Like, I never even wanted to go there. What does that mean? How can you say you didn't want to go there, but yet you went there and you were so excited to go there? So I would try to kind of figure all that stuff out. And... Then I got to, I went to a phase where I was really angry about everything he said would just infuriate me and make me, even if it it wasn't something that really merited a ton of anger, I would just get so pissed off. And now I'm kind of at a place where I just think everything he says is so funny and stupid. Everything about him is so absurdly stupid that it makes me laugh all the time. So, I mean, we'll see where it goes from here, but that's where I am right now. Yeah, no, of course. I mean, uh, Tiffany, can I ask you, with regard to his level mm-hmm. of awareness of um, what he was doing to his victims, where do you stand on that? How do you square that up with his kind of... I know you don't like classifying these guys with regard to this guy's got 9.5 on the evil meter, but... Um, where do you stand on his level of awareness and how culpable that makes him? He knew that it was wrong. That's oh, all that, course. that he, and, and that to me is all that matters. He, he doesn't need to know what the damage is going to be to someone. I am not a victim myself. I don't know what that is, but I've seen it. And I never would have imagined that the the symptoms or the after effect of that type of abuse would have been what they are or what I witnessed. But I still knew that it was wrong from years ago as a kid myself. So he doesn't need to know I'm going to be destroying her life forever. And that's why it's wrong. I could be physically hurting her. And that's why it would be wrong. He knew that it was wrong, period. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't need to be able to give a thesis of what happens after the fact in order to, well, therefore, if he knew all that, then he's more responsible than someone who's completely ignorant of, of all of those facts. You don't need to know them. You don't need to know the extent of the damage. You just have to know that it's the wrong thing to do. And that's it. What about, so his, he mm-hmm. what about when he asks you, uh, why did he do it when he knew it was the wrong thing to do? He's trying to figure that out. You know, that, that's circular. Because point. he wanted to. Because yeah. he wanted to. Yeah. That's all that it comes to. Lauren, we know from 
everything that we have seen that he is selfish and he's self-serving 100% with how he treats his family, with how he treats his community, how he treated Betty. It's all self-serving. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, even, even when it comes to his class, the fact that he has been unable to get out of it is is mind blowing. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's so funny. And and it's it it's good to me in a way that he's not getting out of it. That he's going to be there for however long he ends up being there. You almost helped him though. You almost helped him, but he didn't. Well, listen. the the thing is, is that for Lauren to get out of the class, he has to do something that he's unable to do, and that is to admit what he did. Mm -hmm. And why? And why, without finding an excuse, all that, why did I do it if I knew that it was wrong? Why did I go there if I knew that it was wrong? He's looking for an excuse. He's looking for a moment of, like he took away in therapy when he said that they got down to the root of his problem and it's all because he can't say no. He couldn't say yeah. no. Like at and, and, that but, moment when that was muttered in therapy, and I'm sure it wasn't said in that context, but Lauren took it to mean, oh, this is the reason. And it's an excuse, meaning right. I didn't do these horrible things because I wanted to. I did it because I just couldn't say no. So he turns himself into the hero right. of oh, every yeah. bad deed he's ever done, which is really remarkable. And, and sometimes that, he creates a preemptive excuse. Like, for instance, uh, when... Uh, Tiffany was talking to him about you, you're lucky so far. You haven't you haven't killed anybody on the road, you know, or hurt yourself. And he goes, "Yeah, I know." And and he was talking about um, uh, what did he say? He said something about Tiffany. Oh, but you like bad boys. You know, <laughs> I don't oh, drink. You like Jesus, that was that was that was <laughs> low that. even for law on that. As 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 as, as hilarious and, and weird as that is. If he had killed somebody on the road, he might use that excuse. My that's a good example, Shin. Yeah. yeah, that's a really good example of, of him. You know, there's always an excuse. It's never just because he wants to. He doesn't well, he, drink because he's an alcoholic and he wants to. It's because he likes excuse. a bad boy. Yeah, I was yeah. mad that I did that. It's like, <laughs> oh, God, dude. Yeah. And can I, he's such an idiot. And such a child, in that conversation, he told Tiffany he didn't want to disappoint her. Right. He and wants to drink and drive drunk and be a total shithead because he doesn't want to disappoint her. She was ready to be blamed. So That's one way. Uh, th this kind of leads back to what you said, Tiffany, about you don't care about this guy, which most people <laughs> don't. I think, really, there's only his mum that does. Um, because he's not done anything to warrant anybody caring about him. He's never done anything that we're aware of that's a selfless act. Um, and we know how he behaves when he thinks people are not watching, um, which is the true testament to someone's character. Um, but with regard to the catfishing, if Lon wasn't a sex offender would it be wrong to do what's happened to him or to do you know to speak to him like you did and pretend to be casey miro or whatever it was <laughs> well i wouldn't have done it yeah if he wasn't who he is and as i mentioned before prank calls things like that they're not really anything that i'm interested in doing and so when it when it comes to Lauren, if you were to look at everything he's done and say, for example, that the, the Kentucky sting was off the table. Nobody ever knew anything about that. And all we had was the Betty situation. If he had resolved that somehow or was in the process of resolving it, then I wouldn't have anything to say about it. Because I understand that people fuck up. I do it myself. Everybody does. And, and the reasons for things happening 
could be, um, you know, they're, they're all personal and it could be that you're angry. It could be that you didn't realize what the, the backlash was going to be or the consequences were going to be. It could be that you didn't care, whatever. And, and everybody goes through a lot of different, different things in life and everybody makes mistakes. Mm-hmm. Lorne in the situation where he was with Betty, I don't believe that he walked in there saying, I'm going to scam these people, not finish the job. And as soon I as I get a chunk of money, I'm leaving. I think what he mm-hmm. did was he had this offer to make a bunch of money, do the level of work that he was used to doing. And it was just going to be acceptable, even though it's shitty. And he was going to walk away and then he was going to go on to the next job and he was going to do that. Now, if, I think what ended up happening was he was in way over his head. And unfortunately for him, he had Betty paying attention to what he was doing. And like her neighbor... The documentary on the, um, do you remember the documentary mm-hmm. that you, you had um, asked me to watch about the, this festival? And they were going to do that festival on that yeah. island. And they just like got to a point oh, where like, fire. We're, com- fire. we're completely yeah. over our, mm-hmm. It was like, it was a bad analogy to make, but I, that's... I believe that's the case with Lorne. I think that, that yeah. that's what happened. I think it, it, he was not qualified to do what he did. When he talks about his crew, he, he doesn't qualified. have a crew. He doesn't have a crew. Right. He, has, he has his friend and you know whoever in his family he dragged over. Um, yeah. But yeah. he didn't have... Who are also unqualified. People. That's exactly it. Everyone's unqualified. And they're they're doing this this huge job for somebody that obviously, again, they're way and way over their head. If Lorne had, if it had ended the way that it did, in the in the sense that he takes off, he leaves, he abandons his life there and goes off to Nashville, and then he comes back and he says, "I'm sorry. How can I make this better for you?" We need, we need to fix this. I need to pay you back the money. Wait, and... that's one? That, that, no, no, no. This isn't, this isn't, this is no. I'm saying I if that would have happened, that. if that would have happened, if he would, even if he had already done it, which is really a shitty thing to do. If he had turned around himself and said, I'm sorry, here's what I'm going to do to make this right. And he was in the process of paying her back. And it, he didn't have to give her everything all at once. He could still, even to this day, be paying her $100 a month. Whatever they would have agreed upon, I wouldn't have anything to say about that. Because I would understand that he fucked up, and now he's fixing it. Of course, I yeah, think most people... Well, I, I was going to say, he can go on from that point and just make a regular reality show, and people would watch. You know, yeah, it'd be boring in that but scenario. I think it's it's also worth pointing out with the Betty situation. It shouldn't matter, and it doesn't really matter who you rip off: their age, their gender, their financial, um, you know, level or whatever. But the, he didn't rip off some rich guy who owns tons of property and ton, has tons of money. He ripped off. A retired couple. They were vulnerable. Who are very. Right. That's who he, he took, targets. He like, so targets vulnerable savings. people. And they happen to be, or at least Betty, I, I'd never heard um, her husband speak, of course, because he passed away. But from what I've heard of Betty speaking, she's an incredibly likable woman. You know, and you kind of see your your mom when you listen to her when you see her or your grandma or your sweet old neighbor and you think about somebody taking off with her money and and fucking up her life so bad and then running off to nashville to to pursue hit running away from his responsibilities and debts after he destroyed their life so he can pursue his dream of becoming a country music star is really infuriating. And then, like you said, Tiffany, if he had come back and said, I messed up, I'm sorry, I was in way over my head, let's fix this, and tried to figure it out, then it would be one thing. But instead, he said, he, publicly, he said that she needs to shut her mouth. Yeah, she, he actually called her How a dumbass. Dare she, 
Yeah. How dare she talk about what he did to her, which is the, that's the bottom line with Lauren on everything. He's sorry, or he regrets being exposed for his bad deeds. And he's mad at people who are going to speak up and say, this shithead did this. Look at this guy. You know, look what he did. That's what makes him angry. And, you know, said that she should work. She should work. She shouldn't expect him to pay her back the money that he stole. She should get a job. Mm -hmm. Which all of that goes to just making him incredibly unlikable in every way. And, and more watchable. I, I hate to say it. That's that's what it comes down to, right? The worse he is, the, the more popular he is. Well, I it's mean, not shocking. That, you know, it, that people like and respect him, but people want to see more of him, see more about him. Well, yeah, because it's, it's I think it's it's shocking to see, you know, like I said, some, he, he did something bad to somebody, and then he's almost blaming her for it. Or, you know, putting it off on her. She's the bad guy, not him. And he did the same thing with NBC. He's the one who did something bad, but he tried to make them out to be the villain, which makes it really interesting to watch him and listen to these crazy um, stories he comes up with because they're so shockingly stupid and untrue and, and just off the mark, the deflection. So... I agree. That makes him much more watchable. It makes me want to see what is this moron going to say now. Yeah, I think we've kind of agreed, really. That, or, or should I say, the general consensus is that because he doesn't take any responsibility for anything, and he still refuses that anything goes. Basically, that um, you know, whatever he's subjected to is fair game because he doesn't learn his lessons and he doesn't take responsibility. Um, that's only, part of, that's only part of it, Andrew. You know, the other part is what Amanda mentioned earlier, and and that is reaching oh, out. That's something. Funny. That's a really complicated yeah, issue that's... that we could talk about in more detail, of course. Mm-hmm. Well, that's my question. What What do you mean subjected to? Because nobody. It's very. So all he has to do is hang up the phone, mm-hmm. not uh, answer uh, the uh, phone, of course, change we're, his we're, phone number. We've got a guy here who is, and of course it's all his own doing to a degree, is that he is ridiculously lonely, ridiculously desperate, um, depressed, I don't know, um, but he's certainly... That's what's amazing. How can he not be depressed? It's all about about the software. I don't think he is. It's all about the software in your brain. And I think there's no self-blame where Lorne is concerned. A lot of depression is all, your problems are all internalized. So I'm a bad person and I'm a shit person and I'm not good enough. And Lorne doesn't do that. His brain software, his operating system is is very, very well together and i what i mean by well put together i mean well put together in a def- it's a defense mechanism and it's very well done to mm-hmm. stop him from taking any responsibility if he can't take any responsibility how can he feel bad about himself because it's the world that screwed him I, over we know that that's not the case it, 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 we, can, we i could get i've done this in a lot of other video, other videos you could get really philosophical and say like what is free will and does he have free will and then we can start talking about potentially does he have any kind of disorder that we're not familiar with because that's been theorized for a long time because that was one of the default positions initially was this guy's got to have something wrong with him there's nobody that can write the shit and come out with the stuff that he does that is a normal human being there is something very wrong with this person there is something wrong with him but i don't know if it's a genetic disorder i don't know if he's got some kind of mental real it's bizarre i don't know you can't put your finger on that. I mean, if he showed like outward signs of reactive depression or things like that, I I would be whoa, everybody back off. You know, he is a human being. We don't want to kill him. We don't want uh, to destroy his, uh, you know, destroy him completely, drive him to suicide. Or but but like that. that's that's what I was concerned about, and I don't mean right initially. Right. It was like I don't he... think that's, I don't think that's 
possible with him. That, no, that, I don't. I, I, for what it's worth, I don't. But there was a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon saying he won't kill himself. You don't know that. There is always the possibility within a human being that something could happen, something could go wrong in his brain, and he could have that moment where he thinks, oh, my God, and then that's the end of it. He could. There's always oh, there's that always potential. But if, you're, if we're getting telltale signs of it and we see it, you know, that, 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 that's different. I but still wouldn't care. It seems like conflict <laughs> makes him stronger. Would you it's like, like to tell like... us where you stand, <laughs> Tiffany? Because I'm a little unclear. <laughs> you are. <laughs> I don't think she cares. No. Really? Well, I think that's how... the impression I got. I yeah. think it needs him. I think it makes him stronger. He's like, like a Marvel villain. Do you want me to tell you why I don't necessarily agree with Tiffany's um, stance? Of course, a lot of what she says I agree with, and, and I'm not saying that it's the absolute truth. There is no absolute truth in this matter. Just to clarify, there is no one right answer in my opinion. It's a complicated issue. It's fun to discuss. This is the way that I look at good and bad and bad people. For someone like Lorne, who's had the upbringing that he's got, and I know people are going to jump on the bandwagon and say people have had worse upbringings than Lorne and haven't become child abusers, of course, that's the case. But every human being's upbringing is infinitely different than another's. Even a twin, everything is different. There's an infinite amount of things that happen. And when you're young, your mind is like a sponge. And all it took and can take sometimes is for one thing to be uttered to a child and their life is ruined forever and nothing can undo that damage that's one of the reasons why i'm so interested in this what the fuck happened to this guy when he was younger what made him so lacking in any integrity whatsoever where he feels that worthless about himself that he can the the real breaker for me was when he started talking to ramona again I couldn't fucking believe that after he'd been humiliated like he were, he just put himself back in that situation. Now, that gave everybody enough justification to say that guy deserves, he's asking for it. And, of course, it's very difficult to disagree with it at that point because you're thinking, he knows he's getting recorded. What the fuck is he doing? Well, it's not, it's, it, he's being told by everybody. He's being told by his family. He's being told by probation. They're showing him the recordings. And they're doing, it and but but he keeps on. He just keeps doing it. I mean, and and the, the other thing is, you know, a lot of these recordings are like, for instance, voice messages he's leaving. So he knows he's being recorded. You know, but there's nothing that stops that train from going down the track with him. You know, he, he just he somehow he's got these blinders on from all these people who are trying to give him logical advice. You know, hey, I think look, it's just the- desperation, Shin. I think it takes over, and it's it, it's wired into us as humans to if any way possible to because loneliness and isolation is our internal mechanism telling us that we're at risk of dying because when we were hunter gatherers if we weren't part of the tribe we would die we'd get picked off by predators you wouldn't be able to survive you wouldn't be able to do what you needed to do that's hundreds of thousands of years maybe millions of evolution and when we don't have that and we don't have those connections your brain is fucked it causes it with lawn it doesn't cause depression but it causes acute desperation where integrity don't exist and he will literally do anything to avoid why does he go over to tony oh god bless him um to tony's house um and wendy's and drink even though because it's better than the alternative and i've been in a position in positions in my life where i felt lonely luckily I've had probably a better upbringing than Lorne, and I don't believe that, you know, I've never been in a position where I thought, I know, I'll get online and chat up a 13-year-old. It just never occurred to me, <laughs> luckily. Um, but with what him... What if you were taken advantage of by your brothers and sisters? What's that, dude? What if you were taken advantage of by your brothers and sisters? <laughs> well, I mean, you know, my favourite food is steak and chips, and if someone had promised me that, and who knows what would have happened to me, I mean, you know, who knows? But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I just, um, I've lost my train of thought now. Cheers, dude. <laughs> you were saying how desperation yes. and loneliness yes. will lead you Thank to... You. Yes, I mean, I've probably finished the point ironically, but um, yeah, just, it, it's a true thing, you know, this isn't... I know that nothing I can say will change Tiffany's mind, and I'm not trying to. I, I like her perspective. I like that 
this guy has got someone who will never give him a break because on a lot of levels he doesn't deserve a break and it's not about this is the thing this is what I want to clarify it's not about what Lawn deserves it's what we deserve each other for our own I don't believe that just purposely going after someone regardless of what they've done basically what I'm trying to say is two wrongs don't make a right that's always been my sort of way of looking at things is that you have to be a better person you have to say right okay his purpose is harassing somebody and sending them to the edge of psychotic breakdown a good thing to do of course it's fucking not a good thing to do but people believe it is a good thing to do because it's long and because of what he tried to do i just don't look at it that way hmm brought up an interesting has an interesting comment. Uh, not that I have a problem with catfishing, but I think it's almost doing him a favor, giving him attention. Well, that's an interesting... We'll discuss that. That's a great point to, 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 to actually bring up and expand upon a little bit. Has the catfishing actually been a, ne- a positive influence on his life? I mean, we can only speculate because we, we will never know. It's a bit like saying, what if Caleb was real? It's a hypothetical discussion. Is it... What do we think, guys? <laughs> Overall, I would say no. It has not been positive on his life. It, one of the hardest part, the hardest things to listen to during the, the calls or trying to really get into it and, and understand the storyline is the girls or whoever's talking to him, they have to be nice and flattering at some point to get in there and get him to trust you and like you or them. Um and hearing that enjoyment is not, uh, it's, it's kind of upsetting because we all just want to hear Tiffany tell him to shut the fuck up and tell him he's a pedophile and tell him he's, you know, lopsided or whatever the wonderful, he, and he, he sucks at singing and all that stuff. That's what we want to hear. But you can't just go right there. Um, you have to make him believe that you want him. At, at least at first. So he he did get enjoyment in those moments. But overall, his nude photos have been shared. And he knows that, right? Um, he's been humiliated in front of probation, in front of his rape class. He's had to say over and over again, oh, I got catfished again. I got lied to again. Um, so... His family, I'm sure, thinks he's a complete idiot. He's been embarrassed because he's told his family, his mother, about his girlfriends coming up to live with him. And then, it, I'm sure, you know, at some point, it is revealed that they're not really coming or they're not real or whatever. So overall, isn't the question from Lauren's perspective going to make his life better? Not generally. And, I would, and, and, I and would still answer the up. same. Hmm? Yeah. I don't know. I think he's happy. I think he's happier with it. I, I'm trying to envision what his life would be like without the catfish. It would be, I think he would hardly have any human contact other than uh, Circle K and Walmart. So does that not mean it has been a positive influence then? Well, no, I'm just, again, looking at it from his perspective, you know, um, and I think he, he also likes going around with the idea that he's wanted, even though it's totally delusional, but he, he's, he's got a girlfriend or he's got a fiance. He wears a fucking wedding ring. I mean, all that stuff is so self-satisfying for him. I mean, it all causes I'm gonna admit, a lot I'm gonna of minute. He wears a wedding too, ring. He wears a wedding ring. Oh, oh yeah. my God. He did. <laughs> what? He did. Are you being yeah. serious? Yes. yes. Oh, my fucking <laughs> but Dude, don't take that joy away from him. <laughs> <laughs> he's brilliant. also though he he's not completely oblivious to this so i think he always is suspicious he's always questioning in his mind am i getting lied to again am i getting fucked with again mm-hmm. um so i i think that causes him a lot of stress i'll so, tell you what it does make me sad is when he said, and I know a lot, it's funny at the same time, I, I don't know what that emotion's called, but uh, when he talks about his best friends, being Emma and Dan and whoever else, Winnie, 
I mean, it's like those, that's all he's, that's all he mentions. Doesn't talk about Tony or what, what's that Elton guy, whatever it is. The real it's people. Like, yeah. That, that is so fucking sad. Pitiful. Me, mm. It really is. I think it's funny. I think it's very, for anybody else, I, I might have. <laughs> it's kidding. ironic. But I think it's very funny because everyone knows the truth except for Lauren. Yeah. And the 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 red flags are so huge and bright and impossible to ignore. Just and he's so generous with sharing his life. He wants to share everything, every part of his life. It's like he, he wants to open this vault up and just. You know, and 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 look how generous he was at introducing these new characters: Roy, his mother, Tony, Wendy. All these people just kind of filled up the scene. You know, it's like he brought his own troop with him, um, which drew you in even more. Can I can I just make, you, can I just make a point though? And like I said, I'm only speaking the truth. Whatever reason I like some and not others, there's no point going into, but. Some of the ones where people are just trying to get him to do the most ridiculous and disgusting things do nothing for me. I don't find them entertaining. They're not funny. I find it pretty lowbrow stuff. The Ramona stuff initially I found fascinating because it was almost like he was in a real relationship. That's as close to being in a... And I got the impression that the person that was playing the part of Ramona was enjoying it. I'm not saying that she was interested in him romantically. I'm pretty sure she wasn't, but... She was getting something out of it, like she was enjoying it, and it came across, and that's what made it what it was. Um, like I know, listen, everybody's sense of humour is different. I'm not knocking anybody that, 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 but like I'm like, oh, you're getting him to do this and that and and the other, and I suppose it depends on what you want out of it because you've got, I mean, how many under, how many hours of catfishing calls is there? Do you, do you think just off as a ballpark figure? It must be hundred. There must be over a hundred lots i couldn't even begin to guess but i want i i don't know the answer to this um but you said earlier something about like the end game to you know what was the yes the goal in the end game to the catfishing and i wonder if the only real end game was just to see just how far he could be pushed just how much just what he would do that most people would not do. And he shocked all of us in the things that he agreed to do. I, I think that might have been the goal was just to see. I don't think there was he one. do this? In my opinion, there wasn't one. It was just like, we've got this guy. He's an easy target. Um, he, he's not clever enough to fight back. Um, he tried abusing a kid so we've got all the justification we need let's fucking crack on that was as simple as it was for me yeah maybe well i mean it's kind of unprecedented like this, this is kind of like a new ground yeah. i've I've never heard of anything like well, this Well, that's happening why I before, think it's so. interesting. That's why I believe it's an interesting discussion is because even though, like, you've got the Chris Chan situation, which is the closest parallel I can think of, but, of course, I don't spend that much time on YouTube, so there may be all kinds of shit going on in there for all I know. I'm sure there's people getting catfished, but I don't believe... I think this is a... This is without a doubt a unique situation. You've got someone whose entire life since 2006 has been completely dominated by catfishing. He, he was catfished from a 100% correct and true purpose, which led him into prison. He spent five years trying to justify why he was there and coming up with bullshit, and he got out and he got catfished for another five or six years. And he, I would imagine, I don't know because I don't know, but I would imagine he's still getting catfished now. There'll always be someone who'll want to do it. You know what I mean? I mean, even, you know, but... It's kind of a unique situation. It's like, fucking hell, this guy has been created almost by YouTube. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it makes you wonder, you know, that outdoor footage when he's being arrested and he's trying to hide his face. And it's, the, it's like, why'd you even bother doing that? You know, in a couple of years, you're going to be the biggest thing on YouTube because of you. Because you put yourself there. I mean... 
most perps, you, you kind of get this feeling of satisfaction as they're doing that perp walk and they're hiding their face and they're, you know, they're just ashamed. They're humiliated. You know, he's just not like that. I mean, imagine like a quantum leap or a freaky Friday kind of thing where suddenly zoop, you were in Lauren's body and you look around and you say, there's a couch here. What the hell is that? Is that Casey Moreau? Chris Hansen's coming out? Oh my fucking God. I, I, I'm out of here. Right? And, and you imagine yourself, Lauren would never act anything like you would, you know, that is to, first of all, get out of there. Don't even go for the interview, get arrested, be quiet, keep your mouth shut. Don't cry any interrogation and it'll all be over with in, you know, five, six years, seven years. Not him. He's, he's adding shelf life to his most humiliating time of his life. And we can't understand that because that's something we wouldn't do. You I wouldn't mean, go on YouTube and smugly explain that your siblings never gave you deviled eggs and that that's why that explains it all so everyone should just apologize to you right now for thinking ill of you that's what got i think that's what got so many people just the the defiance and the smug right stupidity superhuman you know when he, there was one conversation he was having with tiffany uh, where he was talking about how when he got back, everyone was apologizing to him. Why? What the fuck for, dude? You're the one who made it, made it embarrass the family name. Or you, Tony, Tony said sorry. Da 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 said sorry. You know, it's it's like weird. But that's the kind of stuff I wanted to hear. You know, their actual reaction and and his and his and how we process that. You know, I mean, it's it's like none of us would ever act. And I think that's what's that's what I think is is so interesting about this. It's like watching a cartoon. It's like watching, mm -hmm. you know, well, uh, a cartoon like quality to his character, isn't there? He's almost two dimensional. It's very bizarre. It's 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 like, like I said when I was in court and I was stood there. I got the intense feeling that Lorne was created by the universe for our amusement. It was almost there was an unreality to his whole aura. It's very bizarre. I can't explain it. And when he fucking rattled on about his cooking show, I mean, you just can't. Who would have expected? That's the thing with Lorne. The things he comes out with, despite everything that he's done, you're like, did he, what? He's, you just can't. You just can't. You just can't believe that he would say those things. It's so funny. How do we all feel? I guess we'll go back into the... Uh the guilty pleasure aspect of this thing. How do we all feel when he goes through a tribulation or, or a trial where, where he has to, he, he gets arrested or he gets fired or, you know, all these things. Do we feel guilty about feeling good about that? I mean, is that something? No. Discussing? I don't feel, I, I used to, or maybe I won't say used to, but there was a, a time early on where I thought to myself, like, oh, I don't know. What, what does this say about me that I'm laughing at this man crying? He, you know, he's clearly very upset and heartbroken. And I, my whole bed is shaking because I'm laughing so hard. So what kind of a terrible person am I? But the more you kind of get to know him, so to speak, I, I lost any sort of guilty feeling even with the catfishing as as a whole i think it's valuable because it exposed lauren's bad behavior it exposed so much about him so many really but did we terrible need that, Amanda james is there anything from that chat log from reading that chat log really if anybody looked at that document Really, that tells you everything you need to know, doesn't it? Why would anything bad that he does after that be surprise anyone? Well, because people, uh, you know, you go to prison, you, you're supposed to learn your lesson. <laughs> you're, right? supposed you're supposed to. to have some sort of, <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to have some sort of personal growth and change and be better. And he's not at all. No, you're not kidding. He's just as bad. You just dug in. Uh, where's Tiffany? I mean, I'm right here. Okay. So, what about is 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 going? I don't think we've uh, really uh, we've discussed it, but 
let's talk a bit more about his willingness to sort of go along with the catfishing. So, how aware do we think he is of what's going on at all times? I believe he knows it's bullshit, but he chooses, his desperation takes over and he chooses to ignore it. So he convinces himself that it's real because of desperation and loneliness. That's my theory. I think he's always, I think he's always suspicious. He's always suspicious, but he is stupid. And he will believe if somebody just repeats the same thing enough, he'll, I don't know, maybe um, he'll just kind of go along with it. And it's, it's better than being lonely, I guess. But it's surprising the things that he's let go of. Like when he insisted that he knew your voice, Tiffany. And you, you right. weren't even, I mean, you were kind of just half-heartedly like, nope. Do you just want nope, to explain that, um, um, Amanda James? What do you mean um, in you, her voice? You, oh, okay. Sense. Well, Tiffany played more than one character. So he, by the time she was talking to Lauren as, as Debbie, she had already spoken to him as another character and we all wondered or i wondered how could he not recognize her voice how can he not know that he's talked to this woman before her voice is way too distinct and the truth is he did realize that and he said to her over and over again i've talked to you you played casey your voice is way too distinct it's way and (laughs) Tiffany wasn't yeah he said that you don't remember that oh and I think it was just in one conversation. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong, Tiffany. But it was funny because Tiffany wasn't even super convincing in her lie. She just kind of half-heartedly was like, no, nope, I've never talked to you. I don't know what you're talking about. No. <laughs> like, I guess I don't know how it ended. But He's a great character actor. That's why. She just changed everything, her persona, her voice, everything. I don't know how he was convinced or if he just gave up, decided he didn't care anymore. He just gave up. One, well, there was one point, remember when he said, um, he said, I know what's going on or I pay attention. In that same conversation, he said to you, I pay attention and I've paid attention for years and I might play dumb, but I'm, I'm paying attention. And there's something about you. What the fuck did he say? It was something so stupid. But it it was like the beginning of his his um, romance with romance with you. Yeah, he was like, "There's something about you that I can't pretend that I don't know," or something something dumb. But it was like supposed to be flattering towards you. Um, do you know what I'm talking about, Shin? Yeah, I I um I I remember the. Uh... He always does the, I'm going to pull the plug on all you guys if he has a problem with one and blah, blah, blah. But the Tiffany thing always, always amazed me how he could not pick up that voice twice. Unless he has a shitty memory. No, he did. He knew. Yeah. Well, he think he was suspension of disbelief? Is that what he decided to do? I think he just kind of gave up. Because I wasn't going to admit anything. As long as you keep talking to him? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that is pretty desperate. Yeah, because, I mean, he consented to kind of spill his darkest secrets to you, Mm -hmm. of all people. But yet he had it in his mind that you were lying to him and that this is all bullshit. Yeah, I because know. in his mind, you had already talked to him. You had played a character and lied to him. And then he goes on to have these sort of therapy sessions almost with you, talking about his, where his attraction to young children began. That's that's very hard to understand. It's especially if you would think that he didn't quite trust her because of that. Uh, of course, you yeah. think that he wouldn't. Yeah, that's, that's... I think that he is hopeful. 
that someone is going to come around and actually like him. The same thing with Ramona when we heard the post breakup calls. He was convinced that because she had spent time talking to him, even though her name wasn't her name, her <laughs> age wasn't her age, nothing about her life that he knew was true, he was still convinced that she cared about him. And I think he just wants someone to show up. After all of these years, he's been catfished since <laughs> when? 2001? Oh, yeah, if I forgot about the Amanda that, James stuff. It went on even before the sting, didn't it? Yeah, mm -hmm. for uh, quite a few years before the sting even happened. So he, and, and no one has ever showed. <laughs> so he really, he really just wants to, to, for someone to show up. And if you're going to spend the time to talk to him, then eventually, even if it started out as you're fucking with him, mm -hmm. he's going to break you down because you, you're going to see that Lauren Armstrong charm and he, he's going to win you over. And whatever ideas that you had prior to that from what NBC put out, as he says, mm -hmm. all of that's going to go away because you're, you're going to say, hey, this is just a guy. He made a mistake. This is he's not a scary person. And then you're going to carry on and have a relationship with him. That he he seems to think the same way about um, when he finally does get her face to whoever it may be. When he gets her face to face, everything will be different. You'll see what kind of person yeah. I really am when you're right, here. Right, right. We won't fight, right? We won't. I won't abuse you when you're here. Mm -hmm. I won't drive drunk when you're here. I won't smoke cigarettes when you're here. I won't get jealous when you're here. And you'll see who I really am, which makes no sense at all. It, it, it shouldn't matter. I mean, if anything, you'll get to know someone better through... So, um, Lon just wants I, I, to be loved like we all do. Yeah, but I think he has an idea that he has a certain, he, he knows his his limitations in reality, I think. I mean, my theory has always been that he would prefer a catfish than than uh, that he is actually relieved when the catfish don't 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 appear. Because I think he's just probably full of anxiety then and whether he's gonna be able to, you know, um, muster scrutiny or, or have them still like him or or, or come through with all the things he says he's going to do, you know, I mean, I think to a certain extent he's, he's, he's satisfied just to have a relationship on the phone. I mean, it, 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 there was one call, I think Tiffany brought it up too. And I, and Ramona brought it up where you're saying, look, look at this relationship. You don't have to spend any money. We don't have to go on dates. We don't have to do anything, you know, to, you know, yeah. well, that's true. But I, I think that that Lorne has never had a relationship well, he said face. that. He said that yeah. to you. Yeah, right. But but he a never. A lot of one night stands, even, though. Well, that didn't happen either, and he's never <laughs> been on a date. Nothing has ever happened with the female, so he doesn't. He wouldn't know what to do. That is absolutely true. And, and he wouldn't. And have I the think him is that Lauren will like to talk about how women are gawking at him and. Jenny from Walmart wants to go out on a date and he can have any woman and people used to come up to him in bars and, and all of that, those kind of bullshit stories. But the reality is Lauren is a registered sex offender. That is probably going to be the end of the story for most women. Mm -hmm. You're going to have some outliers there who are going to be willing to see past that. And we know that based on looking at other sex offenders who then get married after the fact. But for Lorne, that is a huge hurdle. That's going to be something that he's going to have to face every single time he is going to meet somebody. He can't even have friends. And he said that about somebody that he was working with um, at R.C. Moore was that because it was asked of him, well, why don't you make friends with anybody? And he says that at some point he will have to explain himself. 
Mm-hmm. He that's, can't that's just go over. Yeah. You talk about friends as, uh, with another woman or just friends in general? Well, fr- friends in general. Anybody who doesn't yeah. know who he is. Back with, I, I couldn't let anybody close to me because I mm-hmm. couldn't trust nobody. When it's the other way around. Yeah. He brought that I'm up. Sure I'm close to you. I'm sure yeah. it's humiliating, too. Imagine being faced with telling somebody that. Hey, just so you know. I'm on the sex offender registry for life. Here's why. And, and what... furthermore, I'm, you know, Google my name and you're going to have a fun time because there's all kinds of shit about me. <laughs> yeah. But also, I think it's really quick. It's worth pointing out that he, he doesn't know how to. The only way Lauren knows how to meet people, be it a woman or friends or anybody, would be by drinking, going to bars. Or going to over to his one and only friend's house, who's now sadly deceased. But he might have met some people over there many years ago. I can't imagine they were, you know, having big fun parties over at Tony right. Farmer's house in the past decade. But he's not allowed to do that. He can't go to bars. He can't go out and socialize like like people do. So he has no way to meet people. Other yeah, than talk about your, um, you know, when he has to disclose, if he has a relationship with somebody, he has to disclose that he's a, se- uh, a registered sex offender. If he, especially with the tight leash that probation has on to make sure that he's with somebody as of age and whatnot before he starts a relationship. But, um, but part of the reason why I think he prefers the catfish relationship is because they know all that shit. They know the worst about it. Yeah. That's exactly it. I agree with that, but I think above all, he does want them to show up. Even if he would be unsure of himself and and all that, I think he, even just to prove, I mean, I'm sure, number one, it's because he's lonely. He wants someone there with him. Um, But also, I think he really wants to prove (laughs) to the people, the real people in his life, who are constantly telling him, you know, watch out, Demi. These people, no one's really going to show up. No one's going to come here and marry you. These people are fucking with you. He wants to show them, no, look, they're real. This woman really does want me. She really right. does. There are people who want me and think I'm attractive, and they're not just laughing at me. Do you, do you think that Lauren's life would be different without RSO? Or is it staying? Do you think he would be living any differently? Anyway? I think he would have been caught eventually. Oh, that's true. I mean, let's just let's say take that major character flaw out of there. You know, just him. You know, would his life be any different? I don't. I don't think so. I don't think. No, I think he would I still. I don't have- actually because the problem. I think that's a really it's a really great point that Shin because. His character traits sort of prevent him from getting the relationships that that he kind of craves in a way. He's kind of his own, he's his own sort of. Uh, it's a self fulfilling, well, not a self fulfilling prophecy, but he's kind of a dog eating his own tail, really. Um, he, he, because of his, yeah. because of his lack of positive traits, like he won't, um, you know, he's selfish. He gets, you know, Tony and Wendy. I think the characters that have been painted weren't pleasant people. God bless him. I don't like speaking about, you know, because he's past. <laughs> but the point is, they didn't come across like the best people. You know, they humiliated Law, and it's kind of funny to hear. But you know, they were drinking. Tony went to meet my Spurs, my Space Girl with him. I don't think his life would have been any different at all without the RSO thing. I think he'd have just carried on down no. the same path. Well, I kind of, I kind of think it might have been. Um... Because he would have the opportunity to meet more shitty people like him if he was allowed to go to bars. What about the drink. first six years of his life? I mean, he didn't. Uh, well, I guess that's a pretty big question mark, right? Well, that, exactly. It's a question mark. We don't. I mean, we know that he's never had any relationships, had any girlfriends, but he maintains that he had a lot of one night stands. And whether you believe that or not, 
you've got to think that it would have happened at some point if he was still, if he spent the past, you know, decade plus being able to go out and socialize. And, and but the more you learn about him, I think the less likely you feel that could happen. I, I don't know. I, I just think if you got in a one-on-one conversation with somebody, regardless of how drunk they were, getting him to their car, getting him home, I, I don't know if he has that, that, that charm, that capability or, or whatnot. Um, well, again, this kind of brings me full circle to the question I was going to ask, and it relates to our major discussion here. Um, I think part of what Lorne does enjoy, believe it or not, is his celebrity status. I think he's there. There are signs of that. You know, uh, he thinks that people recognize him. Of course, it's all for the wrong reasons, but I think he, mm-hmm. I think he gets off on that. I think he. Uh, I think he likes that. I, you know, there's nothing better than, um, you know, some recognition rather than, you know, just being um, totally alone and, uh, uh, you know, independent of anyone or any forces around him. Now, this kind of uh, people want to engage with him. And he I think he to a certain extent, he gets off on that. Um, and And again, this relates to our discussion about, you know, whether this catfishing is, is right or not. Uh, and, and I guess to be more specific, is he getting something out of it? Um, and I, I think that he is, I think he likes his, um, his notoriety. I think he, he, you know, this idea that he's always suspecting someone is there to talk to him because they might know who he is, that kind of thing. I think you'd rather have that than not have that. I mean, I'm not sure. It's hard to say, but I know personally, this is a little bit off topic, but personally, I really enjoyed seeing him um, go from being convinced that this whole community is obsessed with him, like in a positive way, that there's something special about him. He's a celebrity. He's the biggest thing on NBC. That buys into what Sins just said, really, doesn't it? Yeah. He'd rather be that than a nobody. That's what I'm saying. But I enjoyed see, watching him come to the realization that that's, that that's not why he is notorious. Nobody, he, in this conversation with Tiffany, he finally figured it out and said, oh, I couldn't understand why they were so obsessed with me. And Tiffany's like, yeah, it's not for good reasons. They're laughing at you. That and says I, a hell of a lot about his lack of awareness, that he thought that his infamy could be turned into something positive. Now, you could uh, you look at uh, Tommy Wiseau is, is a great example, not because he's like Lorne in any way, shape or form, but he made a movie that was so bad that it's good, and he's, he's embraced it. And people love it. I love that guy. I really, there's something really, uh, you like the room as well, don't you, Tiffany? <laughs> yes, of and course. We both like... <laughs> Tommy Wiseau as a character from what we can tell it's just like what a great guy he made that movie and some people would hide away and be too ashamed but he embraced it and he's fulfilled his ambition in a, in a way it's just a remarkable tale Lorn thought that he could do the same thing but he isn't just someone who made a bad movie which has got charm running through it he fucking tried to have sex with a 13 year old girl it's the thing that People look upon the worst, and quite rightly so, because to to take advantage of a child, someone's child, is just fucking, just an appalling, one of the worst things humans can do. But he thought that, that like, he could turn that into a positive, and people liked him. So what does that say about his awareness, and the fact that he just couldn't, he could never grasp what he tried to do, and even to this day, it's like what we said, what we saw in the um, lawsuit a couple of weeks ago when he said that, have, what was it, having a chat with an underage child is not such a terrible thing. It just, mm-hmm. it says it all, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, I truly believe that um, he thinks he's special. And, um, and uh, again, negative attention is better than no attention. Um, I think that 
I think he uses that to um, attract um, his, his, at least his catfish that we know. I don't think he can do that, do that in real life. Can you imagine? You may know me. You may recognize me, right? <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine doing that. But the catfish are already enamored with him. You know, they're, 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 they, they call for that very reason that he was on that show. And he's, he's, he's very approachable. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's just a matter of a couple minutes before he gives you his PIN numbers and Social Security number. You know, so, he, you know, again, I'm trying to envision his life if none of this happened. You know, um, I think he would live a really lonely, horrible existence. And I think he would be frustrated. And I think Tiffany's right. He I think already he does. He already does. He still does, Shane. I don't think he feels that. I think that he feels the catfish are his company, are real. So are, are you are... saying it was a policy? But it's been because that's kind of where we were going down. No, I, that's not the right word. A positive for him? No, that's not the right word. I, I think. Um... Well, isn't it positive? You just said that, or you believe that if it wasn't for the catfish, he, he would be in a Preferable. really. That's what, that's what I'm looking for. Preferable, not positive. Not a positive thing. He'd rather have the catfish than no one calling his phone. Nobody would call him. The only person who talks to him is Roy. And 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 his mother won't even say, I love you. You know? <laughs> and, and Tony's gone now, you know, but even before then he was persona non grata there. I mean, this guy's this guy, this guy's a, you know, a typhoid Mary walking around. Nobody wants to be near him. Um and it's but... because they know him. Sorry. No, I'm sorry. I, I interrupted you. Um, no, no. He, but in his mind, that's not his fault. So even if none of this happened, maybe he would live a very lonely and isolated, miserable life. And he would have to, you know, have some introspection and think, why don't I have somebody, anybody? But in this case, he, it's not his fault that he's alone. It's not his fault that he can't get a woman or nobody wants to be with him. It's NBC's fault for airing what he did and and showing the world. Now, everybody in the world knows about him. He always has to have someone to blame. So in this case, I think it it's, it's like when he was in prison, he was so um, self-righteous the whole time. Yeah. yeah, he needed, he was going to, you know, um, expose this injustice that had been committed against him. He was on a mission. Well, like, it gave him a purpose. <laughs> the 44 cents versus 42 cents. I'm going to blow this lid wide open. <laughs> <laughs> when he had someone to blame, he had someone to point at and say, it's their fault. It's never my fault. It's their fault. And this this whole you know, the, I'm sure in his mind, the state of his life right now, if he ever actually sits back and thinks about how miserable and shitty his life actually is, everyone else is to blame besides that's him. Ready-made, that's his ready-made excuse for failing in life. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. And I think he needs that. I think yeah, he, yeah. Needs, right. he needs someone to blame other than himself. It kind of um, what you were saying there about he, he he feels that it's not his fault. He kind of I'm what interests me the most is like like I've said and I repeat myself all the time is what what created Lawn. I don't think people like Lawn just the born, and then that's the end of it. There's some really negative shits happened to him like. He, he he makes the decisions to be like he is, and I'm not trying to say he doesn't. But it's like, what negative influence did he have that set him on this path? And was there, was there ever a way? His delusions are so deeply embedded. It's like, I suppose I'm going back to the point of, is there something fundamentally wrong with him that we're not aware of? Because if that's the case, that puts a whole different complexion on everything, doesn't it? It doesn't for me. Me either. So if he, it uh, really if... doesn't because okay. mm-hmm. I, I don't care 
what could be wrong with him or not. There's also the the idea that he does know that it was wrong. He mm-hmm. does know. He's not completely... He didn't walk into the house and then have Chris Hansen walk out and be like, what? What's wrong? I don't understand what you're doing here. I'm here to see my girlfriend. There was none of that. He knew exactly what was happening. No, he knew he, knew he was exactly. legally wrong. He knew he was completely of screwed. Course. Of course. So then That's what all that matter? needed. It yeah. doesn't matter what in his mind he realizes what's wrong or to what level or if he has your understanding or my understanding or anyone else's. It's his understanding and it's wrong. That's it. Okay. And if I he mean, feels I, safe, I, I go forward with it. I don't agree with the black and white thing. I think that if... I'm not saying that... I don't know if there's something... I don't think there is anything. For what it... For what it's worth, I don't think there is any kind of massive genetic issue that's making him behave like this. I think it's a number of factors um, from his past and his refusal to change, which is very pronounced and very cartoon-like, and that's why we find it funny. But I don't believe that if if someone had... Because we're almost getting philosophical here. How much free will do people have? And... How much of the decisions are influenced by the past? You see, the the sort of beliefs that I adhere to say that un, until you gain a level of awareness to go beyond your mental conditioning, you don't have free will. And there's a lot of philosophers that say the same thing, and Shakespeare said the same thing. We're all just actors on a stage, like ants running around, not knowing what. We're like drones. So it's like how aware is he and and how aware are we all and like i said you can go as deep as you want to with this and you can go as deep as you want to is because we're all you know each human is infinitely complicated we will never understand the human spirit but i don't attribute the same my perspective is a little bit different i don't believe everything's black and white i think everything's a shade of gray and i think that um like i said i believe that when i made the video about lawn's absent father and obviously i got some a little bit of grief in the comments saying you know you're making excuses for him that's not what i'm trying to do i was trying to figure out if there's a if there's specific reasons that he ended up to be what is it why can he not take a shred of responsibility because it's not it's it's abnormal isn't it it's not normal behavior by any standard it's just completely um it's just out there isn't it that's why we find it so entertaining if there is something wrong with him then what's what's even more maddening is the fact that he refuses to accept help or he refuses to cooperate he refuses to give himself up you know rape class for nine years come on christ's sake you know, all you got to do is just play the game, you know. Um, but, you know, the only people he'll open up to is people who he is romantically enamored with. You know, Maria, Tiffany, things like that. I mean, people like that. Um, he can't he can't be helped, which is particularly maddening about the whole thing. If, if you want to feel sorry for someone, uh, you know, and they're trying to help themselves, that's a different story. Um, but when you, you know, it's like, it's like that old thing, you know, the narcissist, the thing about narcissism is it's a, it's a disorder that people do not want to be cured from. They don't feel like they need to be cured. It's the very nature of the, of the disorder. Mm-hmm. You know, so, you know, great Lauren, let the show go on. I mean, when you say something wrong with him, that's a difficult thing to, I mean, well, first of all, none of us are, you know, qualified to, to diagnose that, but something, I mean, there's something wrong with everyone in some way or another, you know, our, whether we had a bad childhood, we had bad influence, you know, anything that you could say about Lauren you could say about practically anyone in the world 
there's always going to be something that influences you and something wrong, you know, so to speak. Um, but as far as Lauren's level of awareness, I would say he was aware enough. And that's all that really matters. He was, yeah. it's like Tiffany said, he, he knew it was wrong. That's, it's pretty black and white to me too, as far as, um, you know, different levels of, of his uh, culpability. Right. For, Lauren doesn't for care what he did. that he knows he's doing wrong and he doesn't care. Um, that's quite obvious. But, but Andrew, he cares if other people know that. Yeah, but he, he doesn't. He, he doesn't cares care. about being exposed. He doesn't care for his own integrity and his own soul. Mm-hmm. He doesn't give a shit. He, and there's many, and there's millions of people like him who will basically do anything if it means a quick pleasure. If it means a quick something that they'll gain, you know, they'll screw people over, they'll rob them, beat them, kill them. There's many, many people. Lorne is like that. He, if he thinks he can get a quick fix from something, he'll do it. Um, there's, there's no doubt about that. The, 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 the philosophy that I adhere to, and I know people are going to roll the fucking eyes, but this is the way it is, is that when someone's bad, they don't really know what they're doing. Now, I know you're going to say, of course they know what they're doing. They, they know it's wrong. Yes, they do know it's wrong, but at a very at the very deepest level within our soul, you're kind of lost rather than bad. That's the way I look at it. And you know, it was Aristotle, I think, that said that. And even I'm going to have to quote Jesus. I'm sorry, but he said, "Forgive them." On you know, this is, well, I believe I weren't fucking there when he was on the cross, but he said, "Forgive them, for they know not what they do." Which is one of the most powerful. There's so much truth in that. Is that when someone is behaving in ways that we find appalling, the greatest strength that a human being can find is forgiveness. And it doesn't mean forgive what they've done. It doesn't mean allow them. It doesn't mean enable the behavior. It doesn't mean that you don't punish them. It means that you... you. It doesn't mean that you have sympathy. It means that you see that that person is not anywhere near... It, they're denying themselves so much... They don't understand how to behave as a human because they're denying themselves love and they're inflicting suffering and that will come back to you. If not in this life, the next. That's the way I look at people. Yeah. And that's the way I look at life and that's the way I look at law. And if anybody thinks differently, that's the right. That's my perspective and that's the way it's always been with law. The reason I like discussing this particular case is because it's very, very unique. There is one thing, because I don't believe that the catfishing is particularly... I used to think it was very, very black and white and it was wrong and that was the end of it. I still am leaning in that direction. But there's other things that I didn't consider. So, for instance, some real victims of sexual abuse may have got satisfaction from hearing him squirm. And that could have been therapeutic and listening to Tiffany put him in his place. And if some victims of sexual abuse got something out of that, you could make a very fucking strong argument that, that fuck law, fuck his time wasted and his suffering. If he, if his actions have helped, or sort of his, what he went through has helped genuine victims of sexual abuse, then fuck him. You know what I mean? We had that discussion a couple of years ago that maybe this could be some form of therapy for victims, you know, just seeing this kind of comeuppance on predators, you know, this got to make them feel better, I, I would imagine. But there's a lot of things that, you know, in terms of what Lauren does to us personally, things like that, everybody talks about how one, per- one person put it, Lauren is the only reason why I stopped having low self-esteem. You know, there are certain things that that uh, the catfish and, and Lauren uh, create in each one of us. And for whatever reason it is, good or bad or whatnot, my life has been actually pretty good since I've been doing Lauren. I, I'm not saying I'm, uh, there's, there's a there's a uh, causation, but there's a correlation. There, you know, that, you know, um, it's it's a, it's been an interesting distraction for me. Sometimes, you know, I catch myself, oh, my God, would Lauren say something that I just said? I should apologize right now. You know, things like that. You want to be unlike him as much as possible. 
he's kind of like a template on what not to do in life. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, I, I, I think I can speak quite clearly, even despite the you know the annoyance of my channel getting taken down and the drama that ensued. Um, this the YouTube thing has been a, a positive influence on my life. I've met some really great people. I've been travelled to different countries in the world that I might not well that might have done, but I've, it's took my path on a more positive uh, life on a more positive path in some degree. It's been a nice distraction doing this now. If it wasn't for law, and it's like it's it's kind of it's like a paradox, you know the the kind of thing that he did has had a massively positive effect. But because of but for for his own detriment, which is sort of goes back to that really surreal feeling I got when I was in court, like his existence was for our amusement and benefit. It's very very fucking weird. It really is. Well, he does. He reminds us to be better, like Shin said. Sometimes you find yourself in a situation and you ask. Would Lauren do what I'm going to do? Because if he would, then I'm going to do something different. So he's a good, um, he's a good, like an anti role example. Right. To compare yourself to and say, let's, let's not be like Lauren children. And I agree. It's, it's nice to have people who share my sense of humor. So that's been fun. But as far as the catfishing in particular, um, and what you were saying about victims, helping victims to hear, to hear this stuff, it, I I think that's true in in more ways than one. Um, like hearing Tiffany talk to Lauren, she reminds Lauren that it's never a victim's fault, no matter what. When he tries to shift blame onto the children that he tried to groom and abuse, she reminds him that it's never your fault, and that's something that victims struggle with. Is, is feeling guilty and blaming themselves, you know, especially when, if they're very young and somebody groomed them, they wonder, you know, why did I go along with it? Why did I let this happen to myself? And it can be very confusing for them. So it's just to hear, just to hear her say that is helpful. Um, and yeah, also, I'm sorry, go ahead. like, you, no, it's okay. Um, to hear him have to answer, to hear her very bluntly put these questions to him and not let him squirm out of it, to try to force an answer and a truthful answer. And we all know what the answer is, but just to make him say it, whether or not he believes it, which we know, well, I think that he doesn't, he doesn't actually believe it. And he was just saying what he thought she wanted to hear, but it's still, <sighs> not only for victims, but just for the community as a whole to hear him have to to say it and admit it finally mm-hmm. was great. That's why, you know, the, that portion, at least, of the catfishing is, is so popular. It's very um, satisfying to hear that. Yeah, a couple of uh, abuse victims, you know, contacted me before and... Uh... One of the things that seems to be a common theme also is just the camaraderie of the community in this. You know, it's like it's like a, almost like a group therapy session, you know, kind of thing. It's, but it's better. You know, um, I can imagine that being the case. Uh, everybody's zooming on a predator, somebody who may have been like somebody that victimized somebody else. And, and you know, that, that's got to be empowering. But. Again, we're is that a just is that a ra- are we just rationalizing by doing this? I mean, that's what we always worry about. I mean, another way of rationalizing is to say, look what we did for Betty. Well, that that's another that's interesting not- point, isn't it? Because I I don't believe the 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 sort of um, the ends justify the means. But yet again, if you look at the Betty situation, if it wasn't for all the calls, Betty wouldn't have got her money back because people paid for the dump. Uh, they got the calls, they got the entertainment, and it was just that Lorne was getting <laughs> catfished. But like, it's it's just such a bizarre situation because I'm thinking, oh, he's getting catfished and it's wrong, but he kind of like enjoyed it in a way. 
I, I'm still. I mean, have we come to a conclusion on whether his life would be worse or better without the catfishing? I don't think we've. I'm mean, not that we can because we don't know. But have we agreed on? Do we think? What do we think? Uh, um, I think in his mind, uh, no. No, but I his think. his mind is irrelevant, really. I mean, what do we think? Well, no. It's, <laughs> well, that's what, I'm about. what we can't. You know. It's it's a subjective thing for him. What would make him happy? Is that right? Is that worth? No, what, I suppose what, what, what I'm saying him? is the way I look at it is the catfishing has been a, a, a for him a distraction, a, a, a distraction that has led him to not feeling that acute loneliness. Because when the catfish was on the phone, or he thought he was in a, you see, when you think you're in a relationship, regardless of how real it is, you don't have to deal with that pit of loneliness and isolation that some people feel, especially somebody as insecure as Lorne. So for most of the time, he's not been feeling that because he thought he was with someone and he thought he potentially was going to have a future, as ludicrous as that is. So he's never hit rock bottom. Now, usually people only get better when they hit rock bottom. It could be that this has prevented Lorne from passing rape class, and I don't. I, 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 don't I, I mean, don't I, I don't know. I'm just theorizing. We we can't uh, know. No, it's hard to tell. I mean, I don't think he would say anything different in rape class than he tells us. Um, I think he is concerned about perception. Oh well, then again, maybe if he didn't have so much attention on him and people wondering. <laughs> You know what's his life like and and everything, and he goes in and and he does the I'm sorry, I'm ashamed, it'll never happen again. This is what I'm doing to make sure it never happens again. Uh, and then he doesn't have to worry about uh, anybody finding out that he did that. You know, to take take away his uh, his defiance. Maybe, maybe he would he would come through, but I doubt it. I I think he's always going to be defiant, no matter what. And, and, and you got to remember, originally he thought that this community, his notoriety, was going to bring him support. <laughs> you know? Yeah, he did. <laughs> you know, that that's just, that, that is about as polluted as it gets. I mean, selling his eBay stuff with his autograph on it. A guitar that I believe was selling more than a, than a Dolly Parton signed guitar, I believe. Yeah. I think it was yeah. two grand, wasn't it? Uh-huh. I think so. And I, I think I think it might have even been clobbering time. I apologies if it wasn't, but I'm sure he found or said that there was a there was a there was a, a guitar on eBay that Dolly Parton had signed that was less than the one that fucking <laughs> Can you believe it though? Like just think about that for a minute. The comedy potential there is brilliant, but like just that's just so he thought he had celebrity supporters. Yeah, like, was it uh, Stallone? Who? and uh, Yeah, Sylvester Shania Stallone. Twain? I think so. There were several. Uh, Leah, Leah Remini. Remini. Yeah. Um, the kook, the father of cook. <laughs> Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Ramsey, clip, what was he? Gordon Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he thought they were banding together to... Um, say how unfair it was that he his probation was was where he was being violated for drinking they, his celebrity supporters thought that was unfair we were there <laughs> and they wanted to like work with him professionally <laughs> i think uh there was supposed to be a video with sylvester stallone <laughs> um chair aerobics <laughs> wasn't there something about him like a, a, a going to the grand opening of a restaurant or something, a celebrity restaurant. Yeah. Just I don't ridiculous. Remember, but just yeah, no, stupid, yeah. ridiculous things that nobody would believe ever. Because it all comes down to the fact that Lauren is a sex offender. So the fact that he was on TV, and I think that he he overlooks the reason he was on TV for the fact that he was on TV. And that's why he could believe quite that. quite a fatal error, that, the, isn't it, in his situation? It, it is. Yeah, it definitely is. So you could overlook that and, and believe that the actress 
who participated in the sting wanted to be his girlfriend. And they were going to be like, like Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie. They're a celebrity couple because they were both on TV. <laughs> I, I, I would like to know how probation deals with this. I would love to know. Tiffany, you, you've got to have the, the closest seat to the stage on this one. I mean, <laughs> what, what the hell do they... What do they talk to him about when he comes to... Does he talk about his catfish world with them? What is he... Because that's really the only thing going on in his life, if you think about it. Well, he they're aware of the catfish because they're the ones that pointed out that the photo that he received of Winnie when she was supposed to be in the hospital was fake. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I forgot so they're, that. they're definitely aware of it. And the Everyone whole in his life is aware. What was that? And the whole class is. I mean... The whole class is. Um, his, Tony and Wendy were aware. His mother. Everyone's aware uh, of it every single time that it happens. He doesn't keep it a secret. Mm-hmm. And you know he he like when he's at Tony's, and uh, and he's still on the phone with whoever his catfish is. I'm just wondering what their reaction is. I mean, how do they? What do they feel about that? Do they think that she's real? Do they? Do yeah, they no idea. No idea. Well, we've heard we've heard Lauren say to to different uh, catfish at points. Well, Tony and Wendy believe in you more now. Yeah. So there must have been at some point at least where they were like, listen, Lauren, you moron. These these girlfriends aren't real. And Lauren, you know, either wore them down or convinced them that they they were. Or finally, it was like, yeah, sure. Sure, they're real. Okay, Lauren, whatever you say. Go buy another 18-pack now, please. And his mother's, I think, totally fed up. I mean. I think everyone would have to be. Yeah that this has been going on for so many years and he still continues. And it's just like when his mother said, they're making a fool of you. And he's like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, I believe he actually said once, well, as long as I make money out of them or something like that, didn't he? Yeah, he did. She, I wonder if she ever, ever heard her voice on, uh, on YouTube. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Oh, it was so great listening to that first time we heard him talk to his mum because it was just how he imagined it. It was like he didn't, you know, it's like he was so selfish. He didn't show her any like affection, and it all he was slagging off his brothers and sisters. <laughs> it's just like it's just exactly how I, I, how I imagined him speaking to her. It was just such a fascinating. And she sounded so comical as well. Like I don't want to have a go at an old woman, but she's like honourable. <laughs> Honorable, <laughs> honorable. It's like it's so funny. Like I just couldn't. Like, Lo- Ralph and Laurie are pieces of shit. It's like, dude. <laughs> <laughs> just realizing this is a drunken, you know, fifty-year-old man, and that phone call was probably at like seven in the morning. That's right. And he's still drunk, screaming at his mom about how. His brother and sister are just like your ex-husband, mom. <laughs> it's what you would picture, like you know, the man and his mom living in his mom's basement, and the you know the mom will say something, and you know, like go get a job, and I go, oh, working on becoming a a, a country star, mom. You don't believe in me. That's like how I imagine Lauren with his mother, and you know, it's really unbelievable too the first time his mom was put on youtube her voice was put on youtube he was so angry about that and upset how could you do that to a 77 year old woman but yet he continued to talk to his mother with during three-way conversation during calls with with unknown women that he had met online or on the phone he would still call his mom knowing that they could be recording her. And you you think he would want to protect his mother as for as as much as he loves and admires her or claims to love and admire her. The easiest thing he could do to protect her is just not call her 
when he's on the phone with other people. But he can't even do that. Yes. Yeah, He's got an interesting relationship with his mom. His, uh, I, I think she's, first of all, I think she's totally fed up. Uh, you know, the statement she read in court was definitely written by him. Um, you know, she I put no effort into it. I doubt she, well, actually, this is well before, but I think she was fed up with him for quite some time. Um, uh getting those prison letters and those phone calls and those demands, all, you know, all that other stuff. And, Oh, you're not, you're not home. You must be out slutting around, you know, all that shit. Um, it, she, it, it's very, it must be a very sad situation for her having to deal with that guy. But I don't know. And the other thing is when he complains about his, um, his siblings, I mean, it could be the worst. It could be, the, you know, the abuse he claims, or it could be the Mac and cheese and, and uh, meatball deprivation or whatever. <laughs> you wonder whether um, you wonder whether the meatball deprivation. It just sounded funny that. <laughs> you wonder if they, they 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 ever go on YouTube and see this. You know, Lauren, what the fuck are you doing? You know, <laughs> what the fuck, man? you accuse me of what? Can you imagine if one of his brothers actually heard that example of my past video? <laughs> Like one of one of yeah. the siblings that it was relation to, like heard that. Wouldn't you love oh, them would to put something in the really comments and tell us the real fucking story? Exactly. You know, you know, I, you know. I don't know what he's talking about. He got pissed off about something. He, you know, fixed a little hole in my wall and and uh, st you know stormed out of here or, or said uh, you know make me something. I don't remember doing that. You know, to him it's a huge deal. To them they're like, oh, what the fuck. I think what his big issue is with them is he gave away all Betty's money and he had none left. That's what I think would happen with that because it's, he kind of hints toward that. But I would love to hear a rebuttal video from one of them. It would be awesome. Yeah, it'd be interesting to know what the real story was because I think there's something in there. I don't think he completely made it all up, but there'll be the there'll be his version and then there'll be the truth. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, but it. But when he says that this is the reason why I, you know, I was in the right state of mind, that's why I went down to Nashville, and that's why I tried to raise a ch child. You're thinking, what? There's got to be more than that, really. They didn't give you this. There's got to be something else. There's got to be something. Else. <laughs> yeah, because he kept you know, he kept holding I, I, it back, didn't he? He kept saying, "I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to tell you what yeah. happened in my past." And then that's all true. of a sudden, he's going to tell us, "Oh my God, here, here is the reason why he's ended that's up doing what he did, and it was over." It, it was like he was telling a joke and we were waiting for the punchline. It's like, hang on a minute. A, a, sist, um, uh, one sibling doesn't give you meatballs. The other sibling doesn't give you mac and cheese. The other sibling doesn't give you deviled eggs. That It's like, what? What the fuck? I, I, exactly. You thought, it, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. I mean, that's a small example. I mean, what do they do? Do they kill his dog? Do they burn down his house or trailer? What do they do to this guy? No, they didn't give me mac and cheese. Yeah, so they, I, have, I they put a, have they put like a voodoo curse on him? <laughs> and he's not been acting under <laughs> his own free will and then he come out with that story. <laughs> exactly. This poor defense lawyer, that's probably the only defense he got from him. That's the only thing he can get out of him. Come on, dude, you got to give me more than meatballs. Come on, come on, come on. <laughs> To be fair, at least... But it, it, at the least whole thing it... was hilarious. Sorry. No, no. The, the shaker weight video, the, the cooking videos, the, the, you know, everything is just... And the production was perfect, you know? It wasn't... It was, it was you know, thank God you could see the screen. You, he's clear. You could hear him. But everything else, the, the set design, everything else was, like, perfect for him. I mean... It, I couldn't wait for him to come up with more videos. The only ones I didn't listen to was his singing videos. I couldn't stand those. No, I didn't. Um, I didn't really. But, do you, you know, it's weird. I think the, the long reality show, not even the reality show, just the videos where he'd have a go at um, Nathaniel. Um, <laughs> it's far it, it, the just, wind. Yeah, just videos like that were remarkable. Like there's a there's a total wealth of videos there that's just hilarious. Remember one where he was juggling, like just started doing tricks and stuff. He's like, what the fuck, what the fuck is, this is this circus doing? monkey? 
<laughs> yeah, what was the other one? Um, oh, shit, I can't remember. Um, one that really got me. Oh, oh, and his book. Come on, we can't forget his book. Oh, guys, don't say anything. We, his book. And oh, you all... mean your book report? Yeah, yeah you mean book. that review yeah, that you said you that? was going to do fucking six months ago. Is that what we're not allowed to mention? He added, I he, think it's really he, overdue. He adds another medium to the joy we uh, we have, you know, with him by, you know, writing a book, you know, something literary. It's great. It's, it's, yeah. it's a children's book. That's a good point. Think, think about it. a good idea. Oh, God, yeah. Wow. No, but that, that think about, all, you're right, exactly right, Shin. Think about all the different mediums that we've got from him. Just put up like the phone calls, the chat log, his reality show, his novel, his music. his prison music. journals, his yeah. music, his um, his photographs, his photos, his. I believe there's you know there might be probation reports. There's literally everything that you could put, like. Just think about all the stuff that he's given us. This is why I think that. It almost is like a religion type situation. This, like, it's like it is. That's why I said divine justice in the video. It's because the Church of Cod thing. It's almost like it kind of is. It's bizarre. It's some kind of divine intervention that's resulted in long giving us this wealth, and I just can't. It's, I'll never be able to understand it. It's like, like. Well, well, he. Hmm. Huh. No, he coined the name uh, Cod, you know, so. Yeah. Um, so, um, have we, do, 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 do I'm going to ask you all individually, Do you, Amanda James, do you think that Lorne's life would have been better without the catfishing? Um, well, um, I don't know. I mean, define better because right, right. you know, like we less, said, less suffering. Oh, less suffering. <laughs> um, and everybody. So, I mean, is that suffering? I Big. mean, may maybe, maybe Lauren would have less suffering, but he would also have less joy and less happiness. So, I guess you got to balance them out, right? Um, I don't know though honestly I, I'm going to say no because if he was suffering so much from the catfishing then why would he go along with it for years and years because it's better than the alternative that's why I think that it's actually helped him well then it wouldn't be suffering right if it's better than if the alternative is pure loneliness I, I think then that he would it's it's difficult to say would he have hit rock bottom which, which it, the thing is you could say that it's absolute it's physically impossible that Lorn can heal that can get better that can realize what he is becoming to break down those ridiculous mind structures but i also know that every human being has within them the seed of enlightenment it is a physical mathematical certainty it's it's inherent to who we are as as beings but I it's I, but i don't know he's long <laughs> it does long, it's just, I, don't, I don't know no i don't think so i don't think he'll ever break through his delusions be it alone or with the help of a therapist he's had a team of professionals mandated to work with him for years and then they've gotten nowhere. Um, the progress he made with Tiffany was just because he, you know, he was doing it entirely for the wrong reasons. He thought he was making her happy, impressing her, or or convincing her that he really was repentant and changing. So just so she would be with him at all. And he, I mean, he even admitted that that he was doing it for her um, because he wanted her. And I don't think. I don't know if he's incapable of it, but I, I think he doesn't want to. He doesn't want to break through the delusions. He wants to live in a fantasy. Of course. I think that's what I could say for Lauren above all other things. He wants to live in a fantasy. Mm -hmm. The fantasy is, it's like a child's 
he doesn't want to break out of this child's illusion because it would mean going into the real world and facing the harsh reality of himself and what he did. Mm-hmm. And of course, why would you want to face up to that? Because think about the, think if he adopted the sort of awareness that we are hopefully exhibiting here, just think what that would mean for him. Just think of what he'd have to go through. It'd be too much. That's why I think that that, that his, this bizarre psyche is a defence mechanism to protect him. That's what the ego does. Well, even him reading the chat log, he, I truly believe he would never, ever go back and read that document on his own. No, I agree. Actually read it and, and try to really he might skim it and try to find places where he said no like he said he did in prison but even when he went back and read it with tiffany he wanted it recorded he wanted all of his reactions all of his sniffles and tears and his oh jesus fucking christ you listen to him read that at the beginning of any dirty phrases which have come frequently but before he'd read any of that, he'd say, oh, Jesus fucking Christ, this fucking thing. And like, it's, it's the chat log, this thing. I hate reading this thing yeah. instead of look what I said, you know, instead of saying, Jesus Christ, I, I can't believe I said that. He's blaming the, the object of the chat well, log. He also I blames the old Lord, thing. too. He blames the old Lord. You know, that's mm-hmm. that guy. That's not me anymore. Yeah, he, he sort of, this is something I've always like picked up on. He, he believes that when he used to say, um, oh, um, th- ba- m- m- you know, I was messed up at the time. He's not changed at all. There's no improvement. So he's like still messed up, you know. <laughs> so th- there's no differentiation between him and yesterday's law. None at all. In fact, he's got worse, if anything. And his attractions to fucking adolescent kids or whatever you want to call them is still exactly the, the same um do you, what what tiffany do you do you think what do you think where do you think lorna had gone without the catfishing i mean it, obviously it's just a theory but i mean do you have any interest in, in, in insights at all or thoughts no it's really hard to say what would have happened i think in general his life would have the same the same path as it as it's led him to have as far as him having the restrictions that he's had to live in i think he would have still only had to drink with tony and wendy he was still doing everything he wanted to it's not as if the catfishing stopped him in any way i don't think that it did because he was he was drinking i think more than what we realized that he was Obviously, there are the moments where it's it's very clear in the way that he's talking, but it would often take a little bit to get him to admit that he was doing it. So I think that that leads me to believe that he was doing it a lot more than what he was saying. So I think Lorne, at the end of the day, is going to do anything that he wants to. And he just, if it's something that he knows that you're not going to like, he's just not going to tell you. Mm-hmm. Because there's no way for anybody to know since we're not there. Yeah. So I think his life as it is today, as it was two years ago, I think catfishing or not, it would be the same. He has no options either way. Correct. Yeah, because he's stuck, isn't there? There's no chance for any growth. You can, your life can only change in any significant way if you change yourself. You know, you know, even if you win the lottery, even if Lorne won the lottery, nothing would change. He would be. I mean, we could do a stream just on what would happen to Lorne if he won the lottery. We'll do that for a laugh one week, um, but nothing would change. It it, yeah, I mean, he'd probably be dead within a, a few years, and a lot of people would be the same, um, you know, through excessive alcohol abuse or whatever. But, but uh, of course, I agree. I, I think that, um, you know, people just repeat the same patterns. I think, who was it who said that, was it Einstein said, a problem 
can't be solved on the same level of consciousness that created the problem. There has to be some kind of change. There has to be some kind of shift. I might have misquoted yeah. Einstein then. I apologise. I probably probably not even wor- like, worthy to utter his things, but. I don't know who said that, but I know that Sam Pendleton said that if Lorne won the lottery, he would have the biggest refrigerator full of the most expensive beer. No, it would still be Bud Light. I think. And I, <laughs> yeah, you're probably right, Shin. Yeah. It'll be doof. I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb, Andrew. And I'm going to say that <clears throat> I think he would have passed rape class by now. If the catfish weren't involved, only because he had nothing better to do, and he wouldn't have been uh, inundating them with his catfish stories and wasting time. I mean, that's that's whether he would admit enough for them, I don't know, but he would have come gone a little longer. Uh, and, and by the way, I'm glad that's the case that he's still in that class. I so. disagree yeah, with I that. that it's the case too. Yeah, I was about to say that too. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm, we're probably on the same page, but I'm, I don't think he would have graduated rape class. If anything, his catfish tried to make him see just how wrong he was when it came to his, his treatment in rape class, his um, assignments or whatever. They would point out what he was doing wrong, and he still, he still didn't get it. But I, I would think that it's not very hard to pass that te- that class if you if you have some element of humility, uh, some element of or honesty. even just lie, or even lie exactly. He's he's a great deceiver. Um, but I I think that he could have picked up the game earlier. I'm not saying it would have cured him. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying that it would have been a big mistake to pass him on, which is why I'm glad he's not. While well, he's still in, well, excuse me. Well, he's still a, a nine-year doctrine candidate for rape class. Well, just like Penelope just said, the main requirement is to admit that you were wrong. And those are that's the basis of the questions that are in mm-hmm. his book that he has to answer. And he's not able to do that. Well, that's even a good point. Even when it comes to his plea agreement, he, he feels like he was wronged into making that decision. He was screwed over. He didn't have the proper defense. And that's the reason why he had it. There you have the basis for his lawsuits. But that is also what would be seen as as you admitting, okay, I don't want to go to trial because if I do, I'm going to be facing a lot more than mm-hmm. what I'm going to have right here. And the this government has enough evidence to do that. So... I'm going to have to just take that guilty plea. And so I think that he he would not be able to pass it in any way. The, the answers to his questions are complete deflections, mm-hmm. complete right. deflections. If anybody remembers the one the one question that I've talked about quite a lot is what would you have to have in order to not offend again what would need to happen and he goes Mm -hmm. off on this i mean he didn't even fill the page which is the requirement is you have to fill a couple of pages that's the expectation they really want you to explain things and lauren writes a paragraph about how the internet has people who are not honest (laughs) <laughs> and he's talking about how he his drinking is involved in that question too and he can't answer the question mm-hmm. at all because what he would be doing in a sense is saying okay if i didn't have these things in place then it's possible that i could reoffend and in a sense he would then be admitting that he is a, an offender mm-hmm. and he can't do that mm-hmm. <laughs> And like I said, he should have, if anything, with their help or, or with their input, the cat, the, the, you know, the various catfish with their input, that should have helped him get through the class because it was explained to him why his answers were wrong and why, like you said, Tiffany, you, you went over that assignment with him and you told him, this is, this is why you're still in class. This is wrong. You're not taking responsibility you're not admitting your guilt 
and he still couldn't get it. He still just would not bring himself to admit what, you know, what he did without deflecting and making excuses and blaming everything and everyone but himself. I, I guess my point is, do you think that he he's not honest and he doesn't admit what he did was wrong in order to avoid saving face with his catfish? That's 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 no. Okay. no, I think I think he he just isn't able to do that. I don't think that he can with anything. And that probably goes back to even as a kid. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of deflection. Everything is deflected off of it, back to somebody else. It's always what always. about you? What about you? Yeah, always. it always is. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? What about Ralph? What about Lori? Yeah. What about Chris Hansen? What about Xavier von Erk? Mm-hmm. Or I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's that's his other one. You know he knows when you're asking these tough questions. Well, yeah, and there. That that is just a a a cop out of an answer because I do understand that it's you're not always going to be able to verbalize the truth, especially right. when it, it's it's sort of like for for myself trying to explain why is it that for Lorne I, I hold him to a different standard than I do anybody else. How is it that I'm not able to see him as a human and teach and treat him like that and feel that same type of feeling? You know, even even when it comes to other people who get notoriously catfished, Chris Chan is an example. I don't know everything about his story, but what I do know from what I understand, he's not a child predator. And as soon as the child predator aspect of of somebody's life comes in everything else in my mind gets erased Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what he's done it's like dr nasser who treated you know a, a ton of athletes and probably helped them he wouldn't have been in his position if he wasn't good at what he did but in my mind none of that matters because of of also him abusing his patients. Yeah. I and it doesn't matter. Unusual. Yeah. And, and that is, is the way that, that is the way that I think. And it's something that I, I really have thought about it a lot. And, and I can't wrap my head around Lauren wanting people to forget that or to be able to look past it. Cause it is, his whole being is totally different. It's not that bad different. of a thing. His whole perspective on life and people and doing the right thing it is reality doesn't exist for yours tiffany the way that you live your life and the things that you've been through and that you've learned and that you've grown for and that you, you have empathy for other people them are things that are not in lawn's reality they, they, they don't exist for him He's, he's like a totally different creature in a way it's almost like he's a different species really i think maybe that's why we find him I understand why people dehumanize him. I get it. How could you not at least think a little bit that way when someone tried to do what he did? Um, And there's evidence to suggest that he'd do it again. Uh, But he is a human at the end of the day, you know, unless we could... Do you you think we should get a DNA test done on him, just to be sure? What do you think? 70% (laughs) What? (laughs) <laughs> those yeah. result those results would be fucking interesting. Wouldn't they? <laughs> that would be interesting. That's a huge element. The fact that he would still be doing this today. You know, that's yeah. that is huge. And he and that he's he hasn't gotten better, he's gotten worse. You know, I mean Did you, that, what do you mean he's gotten worse? Oh, I don't know. Maybe he maybe he's always been the same and we're just seeing it now, but you know the the jealousy the, the the idea that until he talked to Tiffany the children could fall in love you know he was still harboring that thought you know that's that's not somebody who's learned anything from prison he hasn't learned anything from anything that's happened to him and i can't believe i left the lawsuit out of all the things i was rattling off before about all the sort of mediums that he's given us i left out the police interview and i left out the lawsuit the lawsuits 
are just i mean i know we did a couple of videos on them but we only scratched the surface and you know un unintentional travel and female powers and whatever He's else bombarding you know. us. Not, it's crazy you know, isn't it like you just can't you just, I just can't understand this at all <laughs> but um yeah he's he's oh um <laughs> he's <laughs> sorry i thought i thought you were gonna uh speak um but he's he's not only unrepentant he it seems he hasn't learned anything over all these years he's taken nothing away from it except the only lessons that stick with him are what he perceives as wrongs done to him by other people mm -hmm. there's so many things that have been exposed about him during the catfishing that show that he hasn't learned he hasn't grown He's not trying to be a better person. He's just as despicable now as he was back then. And maybe even more so because back then he didn't realize, like when he was talking to Kayla, he had he, he was unaware that somebody was watching and um, paying attention to what he was doing other than a child. And now through all, all these years, he, he's known that's a real possibility and he still said and did many really horrible, despicable things that most people would never, never even, even humor the thought of saying or doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's, he, he seems like he's regressing, that's for sure. I mean, I don't know if there was ever a point in his life when he was mature or, I don't know, uh, had some integrity i don't know if that's ever been the case yeah that's hard to say obviously because we we didn't know him back then and obviously he did have it difficult growing up and i i think that his his siblings probably didn't t treat him well and he probably was taken advantage of it's, it's just his it's just his his use of that to say this is why I allowed myself to talk to this underage decoy mm -hmm. that's what blows my mind about the whole mm -hmm. thing it, it just is it's so it, it's so lorn mm -hmm. you know even, <laughs> yes. even, even for Great him way to be it. Yeah, even for him to be sitting in front of Chris Hansen, and clearly that is a very stressful situation. He doesn't know what's happening, but he knows that it's he knows that it's the worst case scenario. No matter who it is, whether that's a dad or a cop, someone that's an adult yeah, that now sees Lorne exactly in this in this home that a girl was supposed to be at. So. For him to be sitting there, and then when Chris is asking him, why are you here? How did you end up here? And he starts talking about Amanda James. I spent five years or three years, whatever it was, talking to a girl. And he goes on this st story. Mm -hmm. he, j he cannot just say, and, and I know why he didn't, because that would be a very hard thing to ask for somebody to be completely honest when they're faced with something like that but for him to to even at the point in, in speaking with him not too long ago was it like two years now or something but for him to still be at that point of saying i never even meant to i didn't want to and he was or, struggling mm -hmm. sorry I, I just want to remind everybody how he told you he actually said that the reason he went there was to check on her and make sure no one was hurting her. And he said that to you, right? I just listened to that yeah. recently. Yeah, yeah. he's he she, said she that. that quick, though. And he also said that there was thunder. <laughs> and you can oh, you can Jesus. hear him. I didn't know that. Sort of. Yeah, you can hear him struggling through because he's making it up as he goes along. Mm -hmm. So he's really unsure of it. And, and I think... 
that his uneasiness of saying those words is because he knows they're bullshit, which obviously they are. Right. But he's kind of like, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> well, to even have the nerve to say it. Sure. You, yeah. you know, you tried to, uh, you know, he tried to make it that one night that was the mistake, you know? And yeah. you tried you try to bring him back to the first night he showed his dick. And that was where he was really uncomfortable. You know, that's where he, he really couldn't explain things. And, and he even tried to say, um, uh, it's because she was showing me attention and I haven't felt yeah. that in a long time. Mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Well, this is before any of the, you know, she was just yes, hi, that's it. I didn't want his money. This, you know, this is what he did before. Exactly. But, well, what he doesn't well, yeah. realize. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I, I should interrupted you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Let's, let's hope that catches up. Um, <laughs> what he doesn't realize is that every night when he went to bed, he woke up the next morning, thought about what he did the night before. Perhaps he did. Who knows? And then did it again. And he did that for 30 straight days. I mean, this is not a, a one time I didn't mean to do it. This is not uh, an unintentional travel. This is a... Uh, yeah, that's why none of his stuff. arguments stand up, and you're exactly right. That's a great I point to make, isn't it? Day. <clears throat> yeah. You know, it's... To him, he's big about quantity and volume. That's his big thing. Are you cheating on me some more? Are you, you know, is everything... Did you get a long enough look at it? To him, as long as he puts the time in, you know, I've been with you for six months, or we've been together for nine months, that's enough for him to establish a relationship to have that other person be obligated to him. Same thing with Kayla. I think he was just trying to get time under his belt for those 30 days, or maybe not consciously. But every night he had a chance to evaluate what, evaluate what he did and then say, you know, no, I shouldn't do this. I, the, I, there is I no evaluation. Stop the, the, Nothing. The, there is, there is, Nothing. it doesn't exist for him, does it? He did not expect Chris Hansen to come out or whoever the adult was. He was, he, he did not appreciate any risk at all. This is my view. I think he came into that thinking that everything was going to go smooth. And well, yeah, that, because he had covered all of his bases. Right. He thought he did before. Right. He was not aware. So he was totally in shock when Chris came out. He was unprepared. Oh, God. I he love that look on his face. Hi, Hi sir. <laughs> I like what Ke I think it's Kevin S has just put there should be a lawn museum in Nashville can you imagine that there'd be like a copy of the <laughs> chat log the original chat log that Chris Hansen had that would be like on a pillow in behind some glass case you know in a like on a velvet pillow then you could have like um, his hat and then like I don't know his t-shirt then you could have like uh, photographs of his you know you could actually you could actually come up with it and then you could press a button and some of the calls could start and then they'd be like a massive projector where he's getting busted <laughs> you know they have I a go. tour bus down there or Cornville imagine a tour bus coming in front of Lauren's house every night <laughs> <laughs> like, love it. I think he would love it oh god Oh my god. Um yeah, well um we've been uh I knew that this would um the, the reason I did it on a Saturday at this time was um I didn't want it to I didn't want to stop mid flow like I usually do. Um we could do another one of these, but I think we've pretty much gone over everything more or less that we wanted to. I'm sure it'll stop and I'll think, Oh shit, I wanted to talk about that. Has anybody got anything that they want to bring up? No, I, um, I, this could have gone sideways. I'm glad it did. This is great. <laughs> no, I, I, I can appreciate Andrew's position and people who don't dis, who don't agree with catfishing. I understand. Um, I obviously can only go by what I'm thinking and feeling and what I was thinking and feeling at the time as well. And at the end of the day, I understand that it's wrong to record somebody without them knowing. Yeah. It's, it's like I was saying before, 
I normally wouldn't. I normally wouldn't even bother. Yeah. Somebody Lord. like uh, somebody like Chris Chan wouldn't interest me. me um, because I feel like he's just being he's being punked and he has been for years. Um, anybody else, it would, it would fall into that category too. I think for whatever reason, when it comes to the child predator, it, it's just automatic. It automatically takes away all of the emotions that I would have for somebody else. And, you know, even, even when you hear these horrific news stories of, of tragedies that happen, and I'm thinking, um, for some reason, I don't know why, this just flashed into my mind, when, when children die over the summer because their parents leave them in the car. Mm-hmm. And automatically, you're going to have people flying into the commons They should be left in there. They should be dead. You know, how would they like that if that happened? And whenever I hear a story like that, or just that's just one example, but I typically don't just fly off the handle like that and say they should be tortured for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. For some reason, Lorne is the exception. No, but is it Lorne that's the exception or sex offenders in general? It's, I, I think it's probably sex offenders in general. I will say when it comes to catfishing, when it comes to thinking, did I have anything better to do with my time? The answer is going to be yes. Yeah, course. it definitely wasn't productive. It was not productive, no. But when it comes to my my feeling that it was morally wrong, how could I trying to be trying to psychologically destroy somebody it, for for whatever reason when it comes to Lauren and again for a child predator I don't have the same type of feeling that I would for anybody else can I just ask you I'm glad you brought that up because it's just re- reminded me of the question I mm-hmm. wanted to ask you do you did you mm-hmm. have moments where it was wearing you down talking to him and like you didn't because surely you couldn't I mean I understand putting him in his place you could get pleasure out of that but surely it wasn't an enjoyable experience talking to that guy yeah yeah absolutely i hadn't anticipated the level of anger that i was feeling and sometimes that would come out Mm -hmm. i think that i think the very first time that it came out was during that pedophile call as it's called Mm-hmm. That was the first time that I I wasn't able to hold it in anymore. And before that happened, it really was just a game. I, you know, I don't know what other word to really give it. It was it was silly to me. You have this guy thinking he's talking to Casey and they're going to be together. And he is so happy that she sees him different, you know, than all the other predators. Because, by the way, he feels that he's different than all of them. Mm-hmm. And it, so so I do I do think about it often, too. Like, what kind of an impact did it have on me personally? And I tried to keep it separate. I still had my job. I still had my home life. I still had my friends and family and everything outside of it. No, none of them knew any of this was going on. Really? Not nobody. Can you imagine explaining that to somebody? I think she did the right thing. (laughs) Yeah. I don't don't think I would be able to. Yeah. Let me ask. Yeah. What was that? What kind of time commitment was it? I mean, did it take you away from those folks and wondering where you no, were? No, work was done or something like that. It wasn't. It wasn't every day. Um, if I was listening, then it would just be listening while I'm doing other things. Mm-hmm. So the the personal commitment it didn't take away from the other things that I had to do. Yeah, that, so I tried that, to keep it separate. But as far as emotionally speaking, I, I really wasn't expecting it to get to that point of, of being very, very angry. And it's when you hear that denial that it just, it's unrelenting. And he will not give any shred of remorse for anything that he's done. 
Yeah. What was it like to um, to groom him when you had to? I mean, you didn't really do oh, that. You basically responded to his advances rather than saying anything. Yeah, I think it, him. right, right. I, I think that it was it was just playing a character. Yeah, I you guess had, you know, yeah. I wasn't I I wasn't alone. I wasn't just speaking to him on my own. It was it was all. It was all a story, I guess. I was just kind of like a, a mouthpiece in that sense, especially at the beginning. Amanda, and I, I don't think Andrew knows so much, but do, do you think that Tiffany was probably uh, Lauren's biggest love of his catfish life out of all the hmm. I think she felt stronger for her than anybody else. Mm, I, I, I'd say I Kayla. Don't think so. <laughs> I don't consider Kayla catfish right? for some reason. Um, I but... know. I I think she was certainly the most normal and the most, or, or Debbie at least. But again, he, she was more than one character. Um, so it depends on which character you're talking about. But I think he was the Debbie he, character. He, he was in love with whoever it was he was talking to. He right. It'll be whoever whoever he's talking to at the time, and he's he trusts them more than he's ever trusted anybody. He puts them right up there with mom. It's the same thing over and over. He just doesn't realize that he's telling the same people. Right. And <laughs> everyone, so everyone's funny. heard it all before. <laughs> yeah. So so anything he has to say. Is it's all either happened before or he's making certain changes to his stories that somebody's going to know. Um, and they'll say, oh, that's not true. T- Tiffany, so when you were saying about it you sometimes getting angry and you, you know, you lost it a mm-hmm. couple of times, which obviously I'm pretty sure mm-hmm. anybody would. Do you, did it have any, do you believe it had any negative impacts on your life, like frustration coming out in other areas? And you was you, you, like you got in over your head a little bit too much, if that makes any sense. You go on a murder spree? I did not, no. And and I didn't speak to anybody else the way that I spoke to Lauren. You know, I didn't become aggressive or start yelling or anything well, like that. that you weren't that bad to him, I don't think. No, but I, I think that sometimes I was. I that bad to Lauren? Oh yes, she was. Yeah, she was. She was wonderfully horrible to Lauren. It's such mean things. There was said. one call <laughs> that was about an hour long that that I listened to where you were calling him ugly and a piece of shit. It was like <laughs> relentless. You must have been in a really yeah. bad mood that way that day. <laughs> really, I could have. I could have been. Yeah, I, I think that it's just it's just one of those things. I think sometimes that takes over. And you realize that it's not just funny anymore. You know, where I would be laughing when the ghost would start making noises um, or he starts singing or something. And it's just it's just funny when you're when you're talking to him about his denial, when you're talking about him, about his crime and how he sees Betty and what he did. It's infuriating. Mm. So that stuff is is pretty difficult. And in hearing, you know, I I haven't listened back to the calls in quite a long time, and I know that it's come up before with with Yushin too. I think, or maybe it was Andrew saying that he may have gotten one over on me um, during the the Molly calls or something like that, where you know I did I was leading him. Or he was he was sort of convincing me that he he wasn't lying and that he was. Oh, and I didn't hear that. Oh, maybe it, maybe it was Andrew. I can't, I can't remember no, exactly. what, what I said was. <laughs> no, no, just to defend myself and not. Andrew not, did it. it. It was you were kind of. Um, I remember listening back and thinking. 
there was a, a bit of lead in with regard to he heard these news stories and, and it got him excited. He never actually said that. You you said it and he agreed with you. And it made me realise how stupid he is because anything that people will say he thinks is an easier route, he'll, he'll say. Um, well, wait a minute, what are you saying? She, she fed him answers on the issue about uh, thinking about abused children and, yeah, and that, that's, fantasizing. Yeah, because you actually... Today. That, that came out of his mouth, not hers. That's that, right. That's not the way I remember it. If so, then you know I yeah. apologize. No, he was. It's he not, was, it's not he a big deal. Actually... It's just that's just the way I remembered it. You know. I think Andrew might actually be right, but he said something about how he used to hear those stories on the news. And but he didn't. I don't think he finished the sentence. I think that's what he was getting to, but he didn't finish the sentence. And Tiffany finished it for him and said, "Like, and it turned you on." And he said, "No, yeah. well, I think that's what happened." Right. Yeah, well, she was talking. He, also, a little later on, she was talking about how you know the uh, uh, she was relating something to Kayla, and and threw that back at him, saying, "Well, you know, something about." Uh, Oh, I can't remember now. Shit, I I heard that call today. I it, it came out of him. She he even described what he was thinking, because one of the things that Tiffany would always say is, what, "What's going on in your head? What were you thinking?" You know, that's not really a a leading question. You know, no, that uh, wasn't. That's that's no, that that's an open question. That's a good question. Well, and by the way, I don't want it. I don't want it to sound people. like I'm being critical. It, it's it, it, you know, for what it's worth, I well, think those calls are brilliant. Well, just no, so I don't. That, I don't think. I don't think it's it's being critical at all. I think that some of it is true, because there were things that I wanted. I wanted him to say because mm-hmm. I felt like they were the they were the truth. Yeah, very you very simple. You wouldn't have known about the victims he was fantasizing about. No. right. But I think the way it was said, it, it could be open to interpretation. I don't think Lauren yeah, I actually know. came out and I could be very wrong. I don't know, but I think, I don't think Lauren actually said I would hear stories about these things happening to kids and it would turn me on. I'd fantasize about it, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. It, he was saying, he was talking about hearing the stories about those kids and, and then he kind of trailed off, I believe. I remember but he that. Agreed. And, and the way I was this is what I thought he was going to say. I hear the stories about those kids and it had made me mad. And it was like he was trying to make himself look good. Like he was trying to find a way out. Because if you remember, what he said was, because you asked him, Tiffany, how do you feel when you hear it now? It makes me mad. Well, why? Nothing's changed, Law. You're still the same person you were back then. But in his head, his mind structures are so flimsy that they'll go any well, way. I... They'll go any way that absolves him of any responsibility. That's the way that his mind operates at all times. That's yeah. just his psyche. Now I remember it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he said he would be mad about it, and then Tiffany would say, "Why? It's the same thing that you were thinking about." Yeah, that you basically. I remember you said like that's you, you know he'd say those people get me mad, and then you go people like you, and then he'd say yes. I don't think he believes that, but he only said that because he thought that's what you wanted to hear. He doesn't right. believe. He's right. never going to admit that he's done anything wrong. He's, he can't. It's just not right. him. No, that's not Lorne. Right. He does mm-hmm. it because he thinks that's what you want to hear or whatever the catfish wants to hear because that, in his twisted brain, thinks that somehow... I mean, think about this logically, right? He thinks he's going to get a romantic relationship with a girl who's questioning him over sexual abuse to children. (laughs) He thinks by admitting, admitting that he was turned on by the thought of raping a little girl, he thinks that's going to get Tiffany in his bed. That was really unbelievable to me that like, that was his strategy to get this woman was to admit that he it's like when he recites, <laughs> when he recites certain things. Like he, he just sounds like a like a child who's had this shit drilled into their head, and they're like, "Oh, I better say what I'm supposed to say, or I'm going to get in trouble." 
And Tiffany's like, well, then why did you go there alone? Because I thought of having sex with an underage girl turned me on. Yeah. She's a virgin. <laughs> and just the way he said it was so, oh, like, he was reciting it. Well, yeah. that, and it's, the other thing, he engages. Sometimes he's, he, he actually thinks he's better than every predator, which I think is hilarious because he's, he's probably the worst. Like, he, he did this huge eye roll when you brought up John Wesley Elliott and, and thinking everybody was a therapist. And, and you go, shh, what do you mean, shh? That's what you did. You know, stuff like that. He, he, he keeps getting brought back into reality when it comes to that. And the guys in his class, somebody said an interesting note here um, that he is jealous because they were able to follow through. I'm not exactly sure about that, but he, he wants to make people believe, or you, Tiffany, to believe that, He's grossed out by it. It's upsetting to him, you know, in every way possible. And such a crock of shit. Well, it might be gross to him to think of other men doing it, but it's not gross to him to think of That's himself true. doing it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he he looks down, and then he, he actually engages in some catfishing of other creditors as well. So, we yeah, didn't he did with that. Eric Thornton. Yeah, and didn't did wasn't he part of the Stanley thing too? Oh yeah, I think he might have been. I can't well, he knew about it. I, I, yeah. I know he certainly knew about it. <laughs> that puts another really spin on the. Is it, he... is it right to catfish law when he's engaging in catfishing <laughs> other predators? <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious that he would separate himself. He knew that Stanley was being catfished in this really over-the-top way with these really over-the-top characters. And it didn't occur to him that he might be the the subject of the same exact thing. Like he really separated himself from Stanley. Which yep. is it was, it's strange. It's like, why wouldn't you think, oh, you like to fuck with guys caught on to catch a predator, but you're my best friend? No, right. I don't think so. Didn't right. they um, provide Stanley with a picture of Lorne? Oh, I think they did. <laughs> 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 I hope so. <laughs> wow. That's great. Yeah. So, do you, just quickly, Tiffany, do you, um, uh, do, uh, do you, uh, are you glad you sort of engaged in that with Lorne? That makes it sound like you did something with him, but you get you get what I mean. Um, am I glad that I, I I don't regret it? Right. And and I don't feel any kind of a moral dilemma or something. Did I do the right thing? Was I just picking on somebody? I don't feel any of that. <laughs> right. So it is. It is what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just add on to, I mean, Tiffany said, when it comes right down to it, is it the right thing to do to record someone without their knowing? And the answer is no. But I, I think there are certain exceptions to that, definitely. Like when you're exposing some incredibly despicable behavior, you know, was it morally wrong to record um, Mel Gibson? being a total crazy asshole to his wife or ex-wife or whatever. No, I don't think so. Was it wrong for perverted justice to record Lauren's calls with the decoy? Uh, no, absolutely. No. Well, no, of course. I mean, oh. those, well, that, that's yeah. very, I will have to make a distinction there. That's very different because that, that was a criminal case. That was a, you know, that was a criminal case being put together. I see that as being well, incredibly different than, 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 well, but the Mel Gibson stuff isn't necessarily different. It, it's exposing his his uh, you know abusive and horrible behavior. Yeah, I don't I don't really know much about that. Would you believe um, the the, well, the Gibson talking, thing? He was he was really abusing his uh, his wife. I think it was and and, uh, mm -hmm. and and they were in the middle of a custody battle or something. And but I got to tell you, it never reached the level of Lauren ever. So, you know, Lorne is the exception for everything. There, it is, even after everything we've discussed, we can all agree that it is quite a, it's a unique case, isn't it, um, with regard to him? Because in most predators' cases, there wouldn't be this kind of 
asking for it type of thing because it'd be very black and white of he's been totally fooled. Lawn kind of isn't. He kind of knows what's going on, but his desperation takes over. So that that puts a different spin on things. But there's also like you know he's he's already been done. He's already been he's already been convicted and sent to prison for five years. Shouldn't that be the end of it? But yeah, he's still the same person. He hasn't learned anything. It's kind of like the reason I titled the video "Divine Justice." It's almost like it's karma. It's karma for him not taking any responsibility because ultimately, if he did, this wouldn't be happening, would it? I think it's all kind of karma. The fact that he he ran away to Nashville after what he did to Betty and her husband. And if he hadn't screwed them over like that, he probably wouldn't have run off to Nashville. And he wouldn't have been in that chat room and found that decoy. And I mean, he might have been caught. Hopefully he would have been caught at some point, but it wouldn't have been on to catch a predator and televised nationally. So we, if, if he hadn't done what he did to Betty and her husband, then we probably wouldn't know anything about him. And he'd be just one of the other many, many sex offenders I, on I, registries I, around I, the country. I totally agree with that. If it, it was such happenstance and such providence that he went down to Nashville, because mm-hmm. he would have continued with his behavior, you know, the MySpace girl and anybody else in his orbit. And I don't think he would have ever been caught. It, or, or it would have been less likely to have been caught. So when he was finally caught, it was done in such a glorious way. It's like he had to come down to, to, to Nashville, then go hop another state to Kentucky. They had to flush him out of the frozen tundra of Maine to bring him down there, you know, where there's very few people up there. I mean, he drives around drunk all the time. He never gets caught unless he runs into a house. I mean, chances are he may have never been caught. You know, I don't know if they have a, 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 cyber, uh, a cyber unit with the state police or they, they even deal with this. He had to come down and we had to, they had to flush him out and, and bring him to a place where they can put him on national TV. There's something so, I don't know, what's the word I want to use? It, it's just so perfect. It, but, yeah, it, poetic, it, yeah, beautiful. It, I've thought of that. When, when you look into, I'm going to get philosophical, well, sort of, like scientists, science is now starting to understand that every atom is connected to every other atom in the universe. So in other words, everything that happens has got an inevitability behind it. And there's an infinite amount of variables which make every incident happen like it was destiny. It's really, we're just starting to understand it now and it's been theorized for thousands of years in spirituality and the teachings of religion but now science is starting to catch up and with quantum physics and things like that so every incident that happens is kind of just just think of all, all the, the li- yeah all all the intricate part. just think yeah. about everything that had to happen in order for us to be sitting here now listening to this for every one of us who's listening on the stream, and for all those guys, and for us four here doing the doing the chat, every little thing that had to happen for this to happen is just it might it blows happen, your mind. You know? Yeah. I mean, if he, mac and cheese. If he got his mac and cheese, that would have thrown the entire. <laughs> <laughs> it could have just we been have the, the postman had a bad like had a bad day and didn't get the he didn't the postman slipped, broke a bone, and couldn't deliver Lawn's mac and cheese, and that made him go to the stink, and that made him in t- travel unintentionally, and we're all here now. Just think about that. It was all a misunderstanding. <laughs> oh, it's just and terrible. if Paula had never broken Lauren's heart, he wouldn't put women on pedestals and blame That's... their female powers. If Bunky hadn't have nicked Lawn's toy... If Amanda yes. James had lied about her youth. She Bunky <laughs> and Bunky. <laughs> but it's, but it's, it, right, it's, it's so funny the way the universe is, is structured like that, Andrew. You know, all these little sequence of events had to take place I know. in order for that big bang. Yeah. You know, anything could have derailed him. I know. You it's know? mental, um, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, if... You know, even something. The thing is, stay. Go outside of what he uses as an excuse. 
go with a reality, a real situation where Betty would have said, listen, I forgive you. It's okay. You don't have to leave. You know, I believe that's why he probably ran out of Nashville because the <clears throat> attorney general's office was probably pressing him. But um, if that didn't happen, we wouldn't have him out in Nashville. Oh, my God. It just keep coming. Keep coming. That's why when I see that great truck, I mean, that, that black and white footage, <laughs> that footage of a truck going around, I'm so afraid he's not going to come to the house. <laughs> <laughs> I just read an old comment from you to just just. A, a, like an hour before we got on stream, Shin, I read an old comment that you had written on, I don't even remember whose video, and you said, every time I see the black and white footage of that white truck, I think to myself, keep going, scumbag. Don't let anything stop you. Don't let thunderstorms stop you. Don't let medium stop you. Keep coming. Yeah. Don't run out of gas, please. Don't run out of gas. That's brilliant. You know, and, and and even small things like if he didn't get that job, you know, chances are he might not have been able to afford to do it in the time frame that Perverted Justice and NBC were, were there. He would have done it at a later date, maybe. Who knows? Or they would have just picked him yeah, up. Yeah, or he hadn't have gone in the chat room that night and hadn't have seen that specific decoy. You know, um, Sherry Twist. You know, if it had just like, or his computer had broke that night, or he wouldn't have been able to get internet connection. There's just so many variables. It's it's yeah. It's he stepped on one bug, and just in the time continuum would have been all screwed up. You know, it had to go perfect. I mean, yeah, but Lauren is a serial scumbag. Like, I'm sure he was in every local chat room every night or you know, yeah. several of the local chat rooms like and he even said he taught he spoke to every single female not woman but female in those rooms regardless of age that was although i get a feeling he he wasn't interested in talking to you know 60 year old ladies he, he, he told tiffany that he he would say hi to every female in the room mm-hmm. and then to Said, well, was that to see if you can get a response? And he said, no, no, that wasn't it. I'm thinking, why else would you do that? Wow, an idiot. You're so stupid. I mean, I, what, and, then, and then, you know, one time Tiffany hit him with, would you have done it if it was a boy? You know, give a shit whether nobody was talking to him or not. In this situation, why are you not leaving, saying hi to every man in the room, too? I mean, it's the same logic, right? Listening to him whimper when he was caught out in that lie was funny because he went, because it was a boy. And it was just so yeah. comical to listen to it. <laughs> it's so funny because he didn't answer the question. The answer would have been, I wouldn't talk to a boy because I'm not attracted to boys and I'm attracted to girls. But instead, he just answers the question with the same answer. Because it's, why wouldn't you talk to a boy, Lauren? Because it's a boy. Okay. <laughs> okay. That one question got rid of that. One, that one question got rid of that, that excuse, that main excuse. That she, mm-hmm. nobody wanted to talk to her. Uh, we we haven't heard that since. Well, maybe we will because he's so stupid. You know, he'll forget he, he he was he he only did this with girls. But that one question got rid of. You know, at least Tiffany didn't have to deal with that. You know, after that was over, she can keep moving on. Okay, we know now. It you know you didn't contact other people because they were boys and you were only looking for girls. Now let's move on. It wasn't anything about. Somebody not talking to her, and you not feeling, and you feeling sorry for her. You know, let's move on. And once you kept through his bullshit, then you start getting into new virgin territory. No mm-hmm. pun intended. <laughs> but that you had a lot to deal with, Tiffany. Wow, well, they were they were interesting conversations. I think oh, when it when it got to that point of of being able to ask him those types of questions and for him to sit there. Yeah. Even though, even though a lot, a lot of what he said is bullshit and I understand. How, how many know, of these questions do you have in your holster? Like for so long? How many were there? Yeah. How many questions did you have like in your mind that you've been thinking about and you were able to finally ask him? I mean, was there a lot of, was that conversation so satisfying that you were able to, to ask him these questions that, you know, even before you were catfishing, uh, God, I wish somebody would ask him this, or I wish somebody could go into this. I mean, it, were you in that territory where you're, 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 you're asking him things you always wanted to, or talking to him about things you always wanted to? 
Well, there's a lot of curiosity. How did he find himself in that situation? Right. How, how did he? And and also, how is he denying it? Because even before catfishing, if we just look at um, his chat log and then also his arrest and discussion with Chris Hansen, it's all about denial. And then the, the first interviews that were done with him, it's all denial mm-hmm. of everything. And so it's it's interesting to ask him stuff like that. Well, how is it? What were you thinking? And and also, I think that in terms of chronology, he was talking about he's never done this before. He's always protected kids his whole life. He's protected mm-hmm. kids. He's never done this before. This was before MySpace, girl. You found out about that. I yeah, assume. well, he was he was talking about he was talking with Ramona about oh that was a, making it seem like this was a one time thing. That he, he made a mistake one time and was talking with this this underage girl. No, he he definitely said those things. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it start it started back with Ramona too, where he's saying it was a one time thing, and they were coming after me, and all of that, and and him talking to Kayla. We also know that he was talking or he was trying to talk to two other decoys. At that yeah. point, and those, and we just know those conversations because they were decoys. Who knows who else he was talking to? And without even knowing the IP address, we knew it was him just by what was said. By what was said, exactly. Yeah. But with Ramona, he refused to admit that he ever talked to any anyone other than Kayla. And mm-hmm. perverted justice must be making it up. It's bullshit. He knows it's not true. Yeah, they sent him the photo of the pornographic image which yeah. was just ludicrous mm-hmm. i mean i mean mm-hmm. i don't know why we're surprised that we're surprised it surprises me that we're surprised <laughs> that we're surprised if you're surprised by that right but yeah. it's surprising to see someone lie so blatantly and so um and with such insistence like when you know it's it's not the truth mm-hmm it's it's surprising to witness that. Like, how can you say that with a straight face? I don't know. Maybe really, some people are really, just better liars. You know, I, I would love, to, you know, to have that child pornography part explored even more. I mean, we know I, Xavier. I, I, I would actually, because I heard a part of that call. Um, uh, I think it was part of the I Am A Predator calls, and I was listening to it. And I'm not I'd listened to those calls in a long time, and I was like, I'd fucking love to know where we got that. I'm just really curious because we did a couple of videos on that, and it, I mean, I, I'm gonna have to wrap it up now because it is getting really late here. But um, the the fact that he was in possession of that had it a whole another element to his um, uh, to his what's the word I'm looking for? His his, his kind of. His yeah, character um, and his, his, his malevolence, really, because yeah, I, 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 yeah. Can, I can kind of, at a stretch, understand why these guys could be attracted to someone resembling an adult if they're really desperate. Mm. I, I, although I don't understand it, I understand how other humans could. And But what I've never been able to grasp is, is the... Is the you know the child pornography thing and i've not seen the most graphic images and we will certainly not go into that here but but from what i've heard there are the the stuff that goes on that i didn't even know it existed and for somebody to be in possession of those is pretty fucking dark it doesn't get any worse than that um for a human really and and the fact that i mean we don't know to what degree we don't know what classification it was but it, it's a very very intriguing part of the uh of the of his story, it makes you wonder whether uh, whether uh, uh, the police uh, were able to uh, get that. I don't again know what the technology was back then. Whether they go into metadata like that, even if it's deleted, like he said. But you know, then you bring up the child pornography. Uh, uh, excuse me, attempted production of child pornography threat that they had over his head. Maybe you combine that with the camera and also what he said in the chat log and also his history of having some of it on his computer maybe we will ne- i don't think we'll ever know we'll never know that now because it didn't go to trial 
No, no, we'll never know. And all we've got is his word for it, and we know his word doesn't mean isn't worth anything. Um, but I think there's one thing that we do know is that he let that slip, and he shouldn't have done. There's there's no doubt that he was in possession of that image. There's no doubt. I know. And we know, I know the fact that he said perverted justice sent to him means that he was lying about something, that he was covering something up. So, yeah. what what was he covering up? You know, he, you know, he's covering covering well, up he how says, he got it. He's exactly well. He said he doesn't know for sure who sent it to him, but he said that it happened during the time he was talking to Kayla. Yeah. So that's why he's linking perverted justice to it. He can't think of any other reason why he would end up with it, like maybe talking to other perverts. Right. And the message was here, look at this. So it's like there was some familiarity. Like yeah, was... I, I don't I don't know. Was did he say it was through an instant message or was it through email? Email. It was through email, right? Well, yeah. Why would someone Was it I thought he said hmm. I thought he said it was through a message. I could be wrong though. It's hard to remember whether they can send uh, images like that back then. Because he would have had to divulge his email, wouldn't he? He would have had to, like, if someone sent him that by email, they'd have to know his email address. It's not displayed on the on the uh, right. the screen. Think of that. Exactly. Well, it would be it would be if he was using. It would just be at yahoo dot com. Lauren A two thousand one four. Oh right, uh, right, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If we answer this before we go off, if we answer this, is this divine justice or insidious intervention, the catfish? Have we answered it? Yeah, we answered this. It's a it's a thesis question, right? Is this uh, the title is uh, the catfishing of Lauren, divine justice or insidious I intervention? I think there's a bit of both in there. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna. Like, I'll go with the with the former. I think it's. Divine justice, and I think it's really funny. <laughs> Divine entertaining justice, yes. Mm-hmm. That's my answer. Right. Well, we know where Tiffany stands, so there's no point going and asking her. So we're all we're all done. Right. We <laughs> 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 um, good. We settled it. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. I think we're gonna have to wrap it up there. It's nearly midnight. Um, can you still hear me? I thought I'd push the mic out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, this has been longer than any of the others. I knew it would go on a bit, so I'd sort of uh, given myself a decent amount of allotted time. But um, I do appreciate you guys for joining me uh, in the because um, uh, I know it's been three hours, so our, our throats are pretty dry now, aren't they? So thank you very much for your efforts. I do appreciate it. It's been interesting. Uh, we knew it would be. I mean, we could go on for fucking ever, couldn't we? It's such a, isn't it? Like, it's fucking like there's not that much to the case, but yet there is. Do you understand what I mean? It's a pretty straightforward legal scenario, but yet the 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 the, the sort of intrigue that it spawned is just remarkable. I I, I just can't fathom it. <laughs> well, now I think we can um, unbashedly go back into a deep dive into either the chat log or something. Now that we got the uh, uh, the guilty conscious stream out of the way, <laughs> I'm sure that we will do. Um, well, uh, yeah, I mean, we've, there's loads. Of, I mean, we could, you know, we've not done the interview, the footage. We've, there's other predators. There's all, you know, there's there's. Uh, there's parts of his lawsuit. I mean, the chat log, by my reckoning, actually worked it out, and it's going to be 2062 until we actually finish it. So, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, it could be be quite a while. So, yeah, um, Tiffany, thank you for joining us. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Amanda James, a pleasure as always. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and my friend Shinsquala Dude, I do appreciate you... Uh, doing these streams with me and uh, balancing it out with a girl so I'm not getting bullied or anything. <clears throat> uh, it was fun, man. Thanks. Um, and everybody in the chat, thanks so much. I know I've had some people um, before it started saying that they had a lot to say about it and they wanted to join in. 
uh, the the conversation a bit like a long radio scenario. But I didn't. It's no disrespect to anybody else. I just didn't want it. It can get a little bit chaotic sometimes when you've got too many people. Um, it's difficult enough to manage with four of us. We're all quite respectful, so there's never really any kind of interruptions or anything, is there, generally? Um, no, no, not usually. <laughs> um, <laughs> so we, 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 we do quite well, but when you get more than four, it's really difficult to um, to sort of... To, 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 so that's the only reason. Um, but I do appreciate everybody in the chat and I'm sorry we've not been able to address everybody's questions because it can be quite difficult sometimes to keep the flow of the conversation going and also monitor what's going on in the chat so you know I always try and keep an eye on things so uh, yeah thank you so much there's, there's been quite a few people in the chat today it's, it's, it's good otherwise there's no point doing these I hope that you've all got something out of it I hope it's been fun I know it can get a bit heavy this you know what I'm like with my philosophical waffle that's just the way I am um, you know that's what I am into that's what I spend a lot of time studying so it naturally comes across in the way I speak and the ideas that I have so it's just the way it is so I hope it's been interesting for you um, and we'll probably be back to the chat log next week I would imagine um, so yeah Thanks to my friends here um, and thanks to everybody in the chat. Take it easy and we'll speak to you soon.